We want to welcome everybody ringside as well as everybody watching online at showbarnflix.com. Welcome to the Miniature Hereford Open World Show here at the National Western Stock Show. Up first into the ring at this time is Class 101 of Fall Junior Heifer Calves. These calves were calved July 1st through December 31st of 2023. We have five entries in this class. We have an entry from Quincy McIntyre, Connor Neal, Ada Pence, John Carter, and Brenna Thorson. This is the only class within the division of Fall Juniors. So the first and seconds within this class will become your champion and reserve champion Fall Junior Heifer Calves. Well, good morning, everyone. We got a pretty loud mic. Test one, two, test one, two. Okay, we'll get her dialed in. Good morning. Welcome to the uh, historic Coliseum here at the National Western Stock Show and to your miniature Hereford show. It's certainly my pleasure to be a part of the day with you. What a great way to start off this uh, female show. A tremendous class of heifers with a really, really dominant winner an outstanding heifer from about every standpoint 
beautiful in terms of her design from a profile. I especially like the height and altitude that she has at the top of her shoulder, the strength and levelness that she has from that shoulder right through her loin and back through that long, square, extended rump. A great leg with extra bone. And when you get behind her, I really think she distinguishes herself from this class with the base width that she has. From front to rear, there's true width in this heifer. I love the squareness. I love the muscle shape. And I love how she brings so much power of that bone, muscle, and body to this class without compromising eye appeal and look. Still feminine and petite about that head. Good in her neck and shoulder, especially relative to the amount of power that she has from their back. Congratulations on a good win. The second and third place heifers, pull them out here together. And the reason I want to do that is that for me, this is easily the closest placing in the class. Some of you will see it the other way, and, and I get it. Uh, ideally for me, I would like to combine the best parts and pieces of both of these heifers into one. The heifer that I've chosen to place second is by far the wildest, coolest fronted heifer in the entire class. Her neck is so good in terms of the set and attachment up high on her blade. She's tremendous in terms of smoothness of shoulder. She has length, she has height, she has stature. And when you get behind her, this is where the contest is won for me. She's really wide and pulled apart in her pin setting. I love her up high in the squareness that she has. If that one's going to be better today, she's better in the lower third of her body. And that's where the young lady's heifer in third has a tremendous advantage. She's got more depth, she's got more turn, she's got more drop to the lower third of her rib cage. Just on her own, if we're out here just talking to her with no competition, I love the pattern of this heifer. She too is good fronted, she's good made, but she's a little more compact today. I'm okay with the difference in height, but what I don't want to give up is the difference in length. This heifer comes as a little shorter when you get behind her. I don't see the width and squareness from hooks to pins as I do in that second place heifer. And so in a close placing, for those reasons, she ends up third. And then the young man here coming out next. I said to the, to the ladies working the ring, we got a pair of minis. We got a mini heifer and a mini cowboy, and that's a cute pair, and I'm glad to see him out here. He's got a really stout cow one, big top good muscle shape and a lot a lot of bone in this tough class she doesn't measure up quite as nicely in terms of balance and that overall femininity and look but that's a real powerful real meaty heifer that I like a whole bunch young man I'm excited inner development and just maturity but I think she's got the right pieces in the right places strong top long and level in that hip compared to her size I think times her friend stick with that heifer keep taking good care of her I think you're gonna move farther and farther up in the shows to come congratulations everybody give them a nice round of applause to start a morning off your results for class 101 of fall junior heifer calves in fifth place John Carter fourth place Quincy McIntyre third place Ada Pence Second place in your reserve fall junior heifer calf is Brenna Thorson. And in first place and your class winner, champion fall junior heifer calf goes to Connor Neal. Up next into the ring should be class 102A of summer junior heifer calves. These calves have calved May 1st through June 30th of 2023. We have a total of five entries within this class. We have an entry from Berkeley Went, Aaliyah Allison, Canyon Dops, Chase Hunter, and Blythe Cartwright. This completes class 102A of Miniature Herefords.
great second class that we have here. And I, again, as we had in that first class, we've got a real comfortable winner that makes her way to the top. I think this heifer's pretty elite. The word that comes to my mind is quality. When you study this heifer, and it's, it's really from about every angle. Um, from, the, from the side view where I'm looking at her right now, she's beautiful. She's great in her lines. She's feminine, yet there's strength up in her brow and her jaw and her skull. That heifer's got bone. I love the length. In this class especially, I like the squareness and the fullness of that hip. When you get behind her, she's easily the most powerfully built heifer that we have in the class. And I think in a set of pretty competitive heifers, she also stands out as the soundest. But in a category that I put a lot of emphasis on, and that's just sheer quality, I think she has set herself apart in this class, and I think she's really, really nice. The heifers that come to us in second and third, again, kind of remind me in some ways of those heifers in our last class in that I think that's a pretty competitive placing. Young ladies, you set your heifer up here. I recognize that she's a little greener in her condition. She doesn't have as much development and maturity as the heifers in first and third. But you want to talk about one that I love from the standpoint of the parts and pieces. Man, I think this one's got a future. Is she green today? Yes. But look at her through her skull. Look at that neck. Look at that shoulder. The length of body that she has. There's some depth to that body, even though she's pretty skinny today. I think time's going to be her friend. Now, as you compare her to that heifer in third, again, that heifer in third's a little farther along, but from a sheer skeleton standpoint, she's better in her rump. She sets up higher and more nearly square from hooks to pins. I'm going to give her a little bitty bit of an advantage in structure today. I think she's got a little better slope to that shoulder and a little more reach up in her front end, which, again, for the long run, I think makes this the better heifer of the pair. We make her better, we're gonna pull her down in that tail head just a little bit, but I think she's awfully nice. And a cute, cute girl showing her, congratulations. And then this heifer in third, uh, she's, she's one of them that I really like in class. And we're still talking about a really good heifer here middle way through the class. She's powerful. This heifer's got more top shape, she's got more expression of muscle than the heifer that just went out in front of her. But those heifers are similar in terms of their width, in terms of their pin placement. What's different about this heifer is the way that she handles those hips from a levelness standpoint. She's pretty pronounced in that tail head, but more than that, she wants to drop and slope more than I prefer from hooks to pins. And as you watch that and how it affects her structure, you'll see that it bothers her on her back leg just a little bit. She's a little straighter on her pastern, maybe doesn't flex in her hock. I think she's a nickel straighter in that shoulder. But from a pure power standpoint, body, top, hip, she's one of the heifers I really like in this class. Congratulations on a nice one. Young lady coming around with the dark red heifer now with the nice bow in her hair biggest bodied heifer in the class. I mean, look how much forerib that heifer has. She measures up in terms of depth right with that first place heifer. Tremendous volume, tremendous capacity, and a smooth shouldered feminine kind of a heifer, but a heifer today that hits me as just a little piecey. She's not quite there yet in terms of the way that shoulder and body and hip all want to go together with each other. She's one of the two heifers in the class that probably begin to get more refined in their bone work, not quite the overall power and stoutness from a muscle standpoint, but a heifer that, again, really nice parts and pieces and a, and a fine individual. Then as green of a heifer as we have in the class completes it, but also as sexy of a fronted and as cool of a necked heifer as we have in the class. Look at the head on that heifer. A big old kind, gentle eye on her, a petite, feminine, gorgeous head, a great neck, no chest, smooth shouldered. Now from their back, does she get out measured by those more powerful heifers? She does, but that's going to come to her in time. Here's another heifer that we just need to be patient with and hope that she kind of grows into herself a little bit. She's going to have some real advantages from a femininity standpoint in that front third. Great job to a good set of cattle. Congratulations, exhibitors. Your results from class 102A of Summer Junior Heifer Calves within your miniature Hereford show in fifth place, Blythe Cartwright. Fourth place, Chase Hunter. Third place, Aaliyah Allison. Second place, Berkeley Went. And in first place, your class winner is Canyon Dops. 
We'll have the first and seconds stick around because we will have the champion summer junior heifer calf selection after the conclusion of Class 102B, which is now entering in the ring at this time. Within Class 102B, these are still summer junior heifer calves calved May 1st through Jukat Company, Manzanola FFA, and Amelia Stewart. This is the only class within the division of spring junior heifers, so your first and seconds within this class will become your champion and reserve champion spring junior heifers.
Well, for, uh, for my part, a little more time uh, needed to sort through a bigger class, but a really competitive class and a class that's very, very fun to judge. Certainly some choices have to be made in here on what a person wants, what a person likes, because there's a lot of different uh, uh, individuals in here that are all very good. Uh, so you've got to place some priorities. The heifer that I'm going to start with is probably naturally as big a framed heifer as we have. I love that with that, and I'm not giving that as an advantage or disadvantage, but a comment. But with that frame, I love the length of body, the length of front, the length of spine, that long square level hip that she has. She's one of the real, real sound structured heifers that we have out here. And I think she's one of the green, fresh conditioned, uh, really appropriately conditioned type of heifers that we have. I think what really separates the heifers in first and second is when you walk around behind them. And I think no doubt this is the more powerfully made, more muscular heifer of the pair that I prefer in terms of her width and her thickness from the top of her hip, right through her hock all the way down to the ground. If we were gonna change this one and make her better, I would, even at this age, like to see her with more depth through that rear rib and flank. And especially uh, in relationship to that little extra height that she has, looking down the road, that's something that I hope this heifer comes into is a little more drop back in that rear flank. I think she'll get it, and if I'm right, I think she'll be tremendous when that time comes. Congratulations on winning a tough class. As big a boned heifer as we've seen all day long comes to us in second place. Here's another one of the real fresh conditioned, fresh haired heifers that we have that's really striking from a profile standpoint. Good in her neck and shoulder, nice in her neck attachment, good in her lines. I love the squareness of that tail head, that bone that she has. She moves around the ring in good shape. A real youthful type of heifer. Simply put, when you get behind her, a little flatter. A little flatter in that rib cage, a little flatter in her muscle structure. Don't hear me call her light muscled, but in a top four set of heifers especially that are pretty powerful, that's something that separates her and I would like to stouten her up just a little bit, but I love her from the side, I love all that freshness, I love all the bone that she brings to the table. Just a real complete heifer comes to us in third. A little hard to get a read on her, she's not one to cooperate the best today, but I think she's really complete, I think she's got the right parts and pieces that I'm looking for. And in what's probably a close placing between third and fourth, I just like that there's maybe a little more youthfulness, a little more freshness, and she's a little more modern in her build compared to maybe a more traditionally built heifer in fourth. And what I mean by that is I've been fortunate enough to judge your, your mini uh, Hereford breed for over a decade now, and this heifer reminds me of some of the more traditional heifers that we saw, just that massive body, that soggy look, that thickness all the way throughout, but on the other side of the coin, maybe uh, just naturally cattle that carry a little more condition uh, that throws off their balance a little bit. I, I just like to see her with a little more freshness and a little more of that pizzazz that we see in first and second especially. I think the heifer coming out next has that. She's got more of that modern build that, that appeals to me. I like the length that she has. She's as long and stretched out as that heifer that wins the class. Her best look is this one she's given us right now on the stand. Problem is, is when you put her in motion, you want to change the way she handles herself in her hip and on that hind leg. She gets a little tighter and more restricted. So we're going to keep her down where she is today just from a structure standpoint. But I love the femininity, the balance, the design, and the look. Great job on that. A real powerfully made heifer comes out next. Bigger top, bigger hip, and a little more heifer than what's offered in the next three. I just like that there's more substance there. She's super cowy and broody in the look that she has up in her head and even the kind of body that she has. But in this class, gives up a little bone, a little more tail head, not as much of that rear flank, just not that overall pizzazz. But I like her from a power standpoint and from a maternal standpoint very, very well. Next heifer that comes out, the dark red heifer, I love the rib and the body in this one. You want to talk about upper rib shape, spring, arc, curvature to a rib, depth and drop to that full rib and, and the midsection, she's got it in spades. I call that a high capacity, good volumed heifer. Now, not as much bone, 
not as much balance and eye appeal, but loads of body, and she's really got a good kind of rib in her. Heifer that comes out next, uh, you, you could probably make a case for moving her up a little bit just in terms of her balance and eye appeal. Another heifer that I like best on the stand. For me, I'd like to loosen her up a little bit in the way she handles her hawk as she moves around the ring. She's a little stiffer and got a little extra set. And maybe more than that, just a little more drop to that rear flank. I know in this breed that comes to them a little bit with age, but today she stands out as a little more pinched in that rear flank. Then her young man that completes the class, super long-bodied heifer, especially relative to her moderate frame size. I just love the stretch and the extension in your heifer, young man, especially from that neck back, a long-spined heifer. She's really square in that rump. She's one of the good boned heifers on this end of the class. Uh, got good shape and curvature to her, but we just like to add to that a little more pizzazz and a little more look today, improve that balance, and she moves up several places. Big class and a good class. How about giving them a well-deserved round of applause? Your results for class 103 of spring junior heifers within the miniature Hereford show. In ninth place, Manzanola FFA. Eighth place is Cow Swamp Creek Farms. Seventh place is Evie Mitchell. Sixth place is Hat City Cattle Company. Fifth place is Amelia Stewart. Fourth place is Ava Henderson. Third place, Briggs Miller Ranch. Second place in the reserve spring junior heifer calf goes to Bristol Pence. And your class winner and your champion spring junior heifer goes to Brenna Thorson. At this time, we will now bring into the miniature Hereford show class 104A of early spring junior heifer calves. These calves have calved March 1st through March 31st of 2023. We have an entry from Randy Clements, Taryn Blessed, Bryce White, Jordan Chavara, Jordan Wilgenbush, Hat City Cattle Company, and Amelia Stewart. This completes class 104A of early spring junior heifer calves within your miniature Hereford show.
We want to welcome everybody on the South Show ring. We have started our South Devon and Pound Makers show. In the ring at this time for the Pound Makers, we have class 201A of summer heifer calves calved on or after May 1st of 2023. This is a two entry class. We have an entry from Jillian Nepp and Bethany Strach. That is a completed class, class 201. We do have our judge returning from yesterday's Catch It Calf show. That is Mr. Colby Hales. He hails from Wyoming. We appreciate Colby coming down again today to judge the Poundmaker and South Devon show. This is such a unique heifer that we've pulled out to win the class. And in terms of her body, in terms of her size, in terms of her look, her hip, she's got a very traditional build to me. But when you look at her soundness, her bone work, her front end, she's got a very modern look to me. So I think she combines some of the best of what I would consider uh, some of the, 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 the features, the traits, the genetics of the past with some of these more uh, modern, it looks like, features that you've bred into these cattle. And, and I don't know that I've seen many that put that together just like she does. And, and here's what I mean. This heifer is extremely powerful. Huge top, huge body, and a good body. I mean, tons of forerib, center body, lower depth. But look at how she stands on that back leg with so much flexibility there on her pastern but so stout and so powerful in the way she drops out of that hip, lots of bone, lots of just authority when she moves, the freedom and the flexibility. And you don't expect after you see that top and body to go up front and see that kind of neck set, that kind of shoulder, that kind of femininity. So I think that one brings a lot of real unique parts and pieces together that I'm not sure we've seen combined in one heifer. Young lady, you get your heifer set up a little better there and she'll give you a nice look. You've got her a little awkward there. Step her up a little bit and give us a better look at that heifer. Set your heifer up a little better for us. There you go. You've got a heifer that deserves to be shown off. That heifer's got a beautiful future. I think she's so complete. I think she's so solid. She's fundamentally sound in terms of her structure, her body, her muscle. Today she shows you a little more crest on the top side of that neck. She's not as powerful and as massive as that heifer in front of her, but this heifer could have won a lot of classes today. I think she's that caliber. I think she's that kind. I want to encourage you to do a real good job with that heifer. I think she's going to be a lot of fun. Here's one of the taller heifers that we have in the class. In fact, the tallest heifer that we have. Um, I prefer the cattle, the mini cattle that have a little more of that size because of the extra length it typically gives me, but this is an exception. This heifer's probably pushing the envelope for me a little bit in terms of frame size in the mini Hereford breed. And I think the biggest thing that I see with that, as much as I like her phenotype, as much as I admire her femininity, as much as I love the stretch and levelness, with that extra frame also has to come the body to accommodate it. And in this class, she reads with a little more tightness, a little more shallowness down in the lower third of that rib cage. So to really match her up and balance her out, we're gonna have to get a little more lower third in her, but boy, from a design standpoint, from a length standpoint, she's lights out. Today, maybe not handling those back legs the best. Here's a more moderate heifer that I think does have an advantage in body. She is really good in her rib cage, super down in the lower third of her body, a little more compact in her kind, wants to get up in her top today. I don't call her just as good in her pattern, as good in her skeleton, but a real massive, real good, real broody kind of heifer right there. Here comes a powerhouse around the corner now. This dark red heifer is loaded up with power. The body, the mass, the width, the bone, I love it. To accommodate that, I want to give her a shot more look and pizzazz. I'd love to stretch her out and clean her up in that front end, tone her down in that tail head. Pair of gentlemen here that are wrapping up the class, got a little one that's got her whole life in front of her. She is wild fronted, she's feminine, she's beautiful in her design, she just needs a little TLC. Let's keep her in front of a, of a feed pan and come back in 90, 120 days, and I promise you we won't recognize that heifer. Congratulations to all these exhibitors. Well, folks, 
Folks over here on the South Devon and the Poundmaker side, uh, good morning to everybody and uh, thank you very much uh, to the National Western for allowing me to come out and uh, uh, sort through the junior show here today and, uh, and a really good first class and, and to my understanding a division here this morning. Uh, I got a pair of heifers that I think both do a lot of things really, really well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lead off uh, with the red heifer. She'll end up uh, uh, going to go ahead and be this division champion. Uh, a calf that I think uh, just in regards to her structure, her balance, her build, uh, that's her big advantage over the black heifer that's going to go ahead and be reserved. Uh, the, the heifer that wins, she's a little smoother right there through her shoulder. Uh, the levelness out through her hip and the flexibility to her hind leg uh, to me is her big advantage. A really nice project there for the young lady. Excited to see how she stacks up here in just a little bit uh, in this pound maker division. The young lady's black heifer that's going to go ahead and uh, end up being second and, and reserve in this division. Hey, if you like them a little stouter than me, you probably switch this pair, no doubt. Uh, uh, the black Black heifer's got more muscle. She has more power. Uh, I like that about that heifer. Uh, but with that, she becomes a little bit rounder built. Uh, that heifer, uh, I wish we could lengthen her out uh, right there out of her hip, level her out of her hip, just make her a little more comfortable there in terms of her top line once we get her set into motion. But a very, very nice first class. Let's go ahead and give those guys a nice hand. Your results in the miniature Hereford show from class 104A early spring junior heifer calves in sixth place, Randy Clements. Fifth place, Taryn Blessed. Fourth place, Hat City Cattle Company. Third place, Amelia Stewart. Second place, Jordan Wilgenbush. And first place goes to Bryce White. In the ring for the miniature Hereford show, we now have class 104B of early spring junior heifer calves. These calves were also calved March 1st through the 31st of 2023. We have an entry from Bryce White, Brian Moore, Evie Mitchell, Jody Looney, and two entries from Hat City Cattle Company. Over to your junior pound makers show, the results from class 201A. In second place, we had Jillian Nepp, and your class winner is Bethany Strach. In the ring at this time now is class 201B. These are late spring heifer calves calved April 1st through April 30th of 2023. We have a single entry within this class from Addison Kelm. And a really nice single entry that is to uh, a heifer that the young lady's done a great job of getting presented out here. Uh, a very good single entry, beautifully presented. Uh, I like the stoutness of feature. I like that heifer's power that she's got from behind. The turn to her upper body, I think, is very, very good. Uh, you know, if we fix that heifer, I think we could relax her there in terms of her pasture and how she'll utilize her hind leg. Uh, but no doubt, uh, a beautifully presented, really attractive feminine heifer here to uh, go ahead and win this particular single entry class. Congratulations to you, young lady. Over in our South Devon and Poundmakers show, we have in the ring at this time now Class 201C of Spring Heifer Calves calved March 1st through March 31st of 2023. We'll have an entry from Peyton Volkman, Megan Felbaum, Jackson Van Herr, and Sierra Steinlicht. This completes Class 201C of Spring Heifer Calves within your Poundmaker South Devon show.
Well, I, I'm a big fan of the heifer that wins our uh, class over here on the mini Hereford side of things. Extremely powerfully made. Lots of body, lots of muscle shape, big top, big hip, a lot of bone under that heifer. But again, very, very correct from a pattern standpoint. When you start putting that kind of horsepower, that kind of product in them, to keep them that attractive and to, the, and to keep them that square rumped is quite a feat. I still think she's nice enough balanced up in her front end. We've seen some that are a little longer necked, a little cleaner necked, but she's proportional. She wears it well. I think what's unique about this heifer is her structure. I like the squareness of her hawk. I like the way she stands with some width at her hawk. And again, for the power that she has, still moves very, very well for me. Gentleman in second place is leading a nice one. Very fresh, very bold in her rib. Lots of body in that heifer. Love the kind of body that she has. It's maternal, it's broody, there's a lot of it. Uh, this heifer is extremely clean through her chest. Again, clean condition. Relative to her size and length, she's extremely long in that hip. She's a sound heifer. The way I think we make this one even better is if we could put the kind of bone in her that is in the first and third place heifer, I think it changes her life. I think it even adds more to her balance. Today it throws it off just a little bit for me. I'd like to stouten her up on that back leg. A big boned heifer, I, I moved up and down and that's, that's my fault. I, I, uh, I grabbed one girl, meant to grab the other, but really a, a long bodied heifer that's got frame and she's got height. Love the extension and stretch. But what really separates the pair in third and fourth is the soundness of structure. This heifer's got a lot of bone on that back leg, but she handles herself so much better on the move, especially in her hawk. More correct, more flexible, more athletic, a really nice designed heifer. We'd like to give her a little extra shot of body. I'd give that as an advantage to the heifer that comes around next, especially right there in the lower third of her rib cage. There's more heifer there. There's more drop, there's more power to her body, and I like that about her. Again, as I alluded to though, when you put her in motion, you don't like her as well as you do on the stand. And I think it starts right there at her pastern. She really gets up on her tippy toes today, not as flexible in her hawk. We just like to see her move out. If you wanna put this young lady's heifer next uh, up a spot because of that, I get it. And I wrestled with it myself. She's powerful. A uh, lot of heifer there, a lot of body, a lot of meat and muscle, width at both ends of the skeleton. A very traditionally made heifer that's very moderate. Uh, the heifer for me, she's just pretty thick up through that front end, thick through that neck, um, not as much width from hooks to pins as those that I've placed higher today, but again, she's sounder, she's powerful, and if she deserves to go up a spot in your mind, I don't give you any argument. I'm a, I'm a fan of this heifer, and I think she's a good one. And then the young lady's heifer that completes it has got some real interesting parts and pieces. I love the bulge and the expression of muscle that you see. You see muscle down her top. You see some shape and some expression and some dimension of muscle in her hip. Yep, yet she's ladylike up through her front end. Now in between, I don't think she balances up as well. I'd like to just see all those parts blend together a little better. Maybe change that tail head and pin setting. I think that'd change your hind leg a little bit. But real good parts and pieces in this heifer that wraps up our class. Good job on this set of mini Hereford heifers. Nice job, exhibitors. Well, on the South Devon side, uh, a tough class here, a, a real tough class that I think actually uh, we could uh, we could dice up a couple different ways and, and all answers I think would probably be correct because uh, uh, I think each of these heifers have some things that we can change and uh, but also some big class advantages as well. Uh, I ended up using this uh, this really well presented black heifer to go ahead and start and I'll tell you up front, uh, I wish we could relax her shoulder and her knee for sure just in terms of her structure. Uh, but I will tell you as well, I think that heifer still collects her top line in a very correct manner. Uh, I think that heifer still balances and outright her biggest advantage is just her substance and her power. The shape and the turn to her body I think is very good. And I still think the way she'll utilize her rear leg uh, I think is adequate. Uh, I, th I still think that is a sound structured heifer. Again, could we lay her back in, uh, up through her front end? Absolutely, but I think she's good and she has a big advantage in terms of power and substance. The heifer here in second, I think, is so smooth and so ladylike. I think that heifer puts together an absolutely beautiful view here from the side. That's actually her advantage over the heifer that wins is, to me, she's smoother shouldered. That heifer is much flatter and much thinner in the shape of her neck. Uh, the biggest thing to me uh, amongst that pair of heifers 
is from the side, this heifer's deep enough, she's easy doing enough that you'd expect that she'd come with just a little more power, just a little more substance, but she doesn't. I wish we could square up in how she utilizes her hind leg. That heifer's a little flatter rib. That heifer it does need more just punch and substance and power there from behind, but a very, very nice representative to be second. The interesting heifer in here is this heifer that ends up in third. I, I, I struggle with where, where, we, where we put her because uh, if we want to be a fortune teller, if we want to be a future reader, this heifer right here, I think, has a, a world of future. I, I love where her neck sits into her body. That is a smooth-shouldered, really attractive heifer in terms of the shape and the turn to her lower body. She finishes her look off with a really neat hip and hind leg. I really like that heifer in terms of just her look and her balance and her silhouette. With that, though, and where I, where I talk about future reading, is that heifer is just a little straighter through her shoulder and her knee, and then as well, um, especially amongst those two that beat her, she is a little bit tighter hearted. She does look a little shallower in relation to her frame size. So do we call her hard doing, or do we say she's just a little skinny right now? I end up putting her third and understand, young lady, you have a very high quality heifer. I wish she read just a little softer, but congratulations to you and best of luck to you. Again, I hope that heifer makes a whale of a bread female. Young man's baldy that's going to go ahead and come next. Another one that I think uh, just in terms of shape to her body and her rib I think is very very good. Plain and simple that heifer's got a little more set to her hind leg. A little bigger right there through her tail head. I wish we could give her a little more power right as she goes away but certainly a good class of four there if you would please help me in congratulating those young people on a job well done. Well, if you would, keep that round of applause going for what I think is an outstanding division of these many Hereford heifers. Let them hear from you. We may very well, at the end of the day, look back on this division and think this is one of the wild divisions of the day. What an evenly matched, really, really high quality, good set of heifers. Especially when you've got these heifers parked on the side like this. They are so fun to look at. If, uh, if you like looking at good cattle, we got some eye candy in the ring. The heifer that won the first class in this division, I think is totally unique. And that's the word that we use to describe her in that class. Unique because I think she's so traditional in the fundamental qualities that brought the mini Hereford breed to the table. The mass, the body, the softness, the power. She's got all of that, but she blends that with a really modern degree of attractiveness, soundness of structure, and just overall look and pizzazz. And it's hard to put both of those in the same package, so I'm very intrigued with that heifer. Um, you put these heifers in motion, I think she's the sounder heifer of the pair. And even as I say that, by comparison, I think she gives up just a little bit in terms of squareness of rump compared to this heifer that came out of the second class. I love this heifer in second on the stand. So cowy, so maternal, so long relative to her height. And again, you want to talk about what I consider a near perfect hip structure in terms of length, in terms of squareness, in terms of pin setting. She hits the mark for me. I think as powerful as she is, there's not a problem with the way she moves. But by comparison, you'd have to say that she doesn't move as well as that heifer in front. In a real, real close placing, I don't think you can make a wrong choice, but this one's too unique for me to pass. She's gonna be your division champion. Nice job to this young lady and congratulations on the day you've had today, but we're gonna keep our pair of class winners together. Congratulations. Your champion early spring junior heifer calf comes from class 104A of early spring juniors. That entry is entry 4451 from Bryce White. Your reserve early spring junior heifer calf comes from class 104B, that is entry 4450 from Bryce White. We're going to reset the ring and we'll get it started with 105A of Winter Junior Heifer Calves within the Miniature Hereford Show. 
Well, on the Poundmaker side, uh, as we get into this second division here, uh, a good set of these three here. Uh, the one out of the first class, uh, a heifer that, that I love her freshness. Uh, she's so well presented, a heifer that I still think has muscle and power. Uh, once we get her back out here against that older class, she maybe looks just a little shallower. She's probably just a little harder there through her lower body. And then as well, once we get her into motion, that heifer is just a little tighter there in how she'll use her hind leg. But I love her, just the quality that she has up through her front end, the smoothness to her shoulder, a heifer that I still think is darn sure feminine and very, very well presented. The young man's heifer that comes out of the second class, like we talked about her, gosh, she's got a world of power. That heifer has a bunch of punch, and uh, uh, I, I like her shape, I like her turn, uh, and I think that heifer with that uh, still is sound structured. Now, with that, uh, I do think we could relax her shoulder angle, set her back in her knee there just a little bit for sure. Uh, uh, but I still think that heifer uh, has plenty of structure uh, or structural integrity, I should say. A very nice representative out of, out of that class. The heifer that ends up second in that class. Very, very smooth built. Very, very feminine featured kind of a heifer. A little flatter and not quite as much just substance, uh, but a good pair of them. And I thought that pair out of that second class was very close. I thought we could have diced those up a couple different ways. So with that being said, because they're so close, we're just going to go ahead and keep them together. Young man out of the second class, you'll be champion the lady that was second will go ahead and be reserved. Congratulate those young people, if you will, please. Over to your pound makers show. In the ring at this time is now class 202. These are winter heifer calves, calved November 1st through December 31st of 2022. We have a single entry from Sierra Steinlicht. Over to your miniature Hereford show in the North Show ring. In the ring at this time is class 105A of winter junior heifer calves, calved January 1st through February 28th of 2023. We have an entry from Mesa Arnold, Brian Moore, Hannah Hogan, Berkeley Went and Bryce White. These are your completed classes within your miniature Hereford show and your Poundmaker show. Golly, young lady, I wish you had a, a couple more heifers to, to play with you here in this class. We're kind of at an off age uh, of being Novembers and Decembers here, uh, but uh, a great single entry, a heifer that's got a world of quality, beautifully presented. Could we relax her inner spine and her top line just a little bit? Sure, uh, but uh, golly, I think uh, a heifer that's got uh, a world of good. Excited to see how she stacks up here in just a little bit. Congratulations to you, young lady. In your Poundmaker show, your results from class 202, the single entry class. In first place, we have Sierra Steinlicht. At this time, we will bring in class 204. These are going to be junior yearling heifers calved January 1st through April 30th of 2022. We have a total of four entries within this class. We have an entry from Lindsay Strach. We have an entry from Chase D. Terry. We have an entry from Emma Gnecht. And we have an entry from Jillian and Tessa Nip. This completes class 204 of junior yearling heifers within your Poundmaker South Devon show.
Continuing on with our next division of the mini Hereford Heifers, I think we have a really, really nice one to win the class that's super powerfully made. Um, one of my favorite views of her is kind of a three-dimensional view or three-quarter view. If you can look down the side of that heifer, you get a real appreciation for the way that she combines a lot of top, muscle, hip, width, and thickness with still a beautiful profile and design. That combined with a really good set of feet and legs, the way that she travels around the ring, I think her make, makes her a pretty easy winner. Obviously a beautifully presented, beautifully fit, uh, very fresh conditioned heifer. It's got a lot of profile and look to her. This is a real intriguing heifer that comes to us in second. What a uniquely marked heifer with the big spot up on her muzzle. Congratulations, young lady. Good job today. Really a neat, neat made kind of a heifer that uh, I said this in another class, we would, uh, we, would, we would probably start a lot of classes with a heifer like this had she not gotten such deep water. But for a more conventional, more traditional sized kind of a heifer, I just love the balance. I love the package, I love the top, the squareness, I love the soundness, especially in this class that she brings to the table. The simple fact of the matter is she just gets out measured by that more powerful heifer that wins the class, but I'm a huge fan of that heifer in second. I think it gets to be a little closer race between our heifers in third and fourth. The heifer in third is a little bigger kind of a heifer that's certainly longer bodied, but more importantly to me than that is her advantage in structure. She's not 100% perfect, but especially on those back legs, she just handles herself better and travels around the ring more comfortably today with a better set to her pastern and hawk than does the heifer that follows her. Now, if you think the heifer out in front of us now is more attractive, if you think she's better on the stand, I'm not going to give you a lot of argument. I think that's a very beautifully designed, feminine fronted, good shouldered heifer. It's got a great top line and hip. But as I mentioned, although I like all that bone she has, I'd like to see her set that hind leg down more correctly and move around the ring in better shape. And then a super long bodied heifer comes around the next that's very clean in her chest, clean in her navel, good in her top line, and boy does she have a top in her. But everything lays a little tight, even in her spine, even in her hip, and all the way down to the ground. There's just a tightness about that heifer that I'd like to loosen up and see her just move with more freedom and cushion and be a little more comfortable today. Not a last place heifer in that class, folks. That's a solid set of heifers. Good job, exhibitors. Your results from class 105A of winter junior heifer calves. In fifth place, Brian Moore. Fourth place goes to Mesa Arnold. Third place, Bryce White. Second place, Hannah Hogan. And your class winner goes to Berkeley Went. Setting up in the ring at this time is now class 105B of winter junior heifer calves within the miniature Hereford show. We have an entry from Ava Henderson, Mackenzie Wyrick, Canyon Dops, Reagan Emmons, and Carly Allison. This is your completed second class of 105 division. These calves were calved January 1st through February 28th of 2023. Well, we're just going to go ahead and reorder them just a little bit different over here on the profile uh, for a placing here. Man, a, a great class as we get into these big bread heifers. Uh, great class. Really, really like the Brockel heifer that, uh, that wins. Uh, uh, that heifer is so big bodied. She's so powerful. Uh, she's very, very sound structured with that. Uh, and yet, uh, here from the side, I love her balance. I love her quality, uh, especially for being a big power cow there. Uh, a really neat kind of a heifer to, to go ahead and win this class. Now with that, uh, I think where we can maybe uh, make an argument is that heifer is a little bigger there in her knee. She's a little uh, a little heavier there in terms of condition, and the heifer in second for sure uh, is fresher in that regard, and then she's a little smoother there in terms of her joints. Uh, she just doesn't read as quite as soft. Uh, uh, you know, at this stage and at this point, I, I wish we just read just a little more turn right there through the rear third of her body and back through her flank. She's just a little more general there, and then in addition to that, how she She'll 
utilize her hind leg. She'll start to roll out of her hip. She gets a little tighter uh, there in terms of her hind leg. Uh, but boy, a beautifully presented, really attractive heifer there, especially up through her front end. A really nice representative to be second. Young ladies heifer that's going to go ahead and be third. Uh, I think that's another heifer that, gosh, uh, big bodied, really easy fleshing. Uh, lots of power in that heifer. Uh, a heifer that does a lot of things right in that regard. Now with that, she's a little rounder built. She's a little plainer to look at here from the side. I wish we could stouten her up in terms of her foot and her bone work for as much power as she has up through her top and out through her hip. Uh, but a heifer that I think, again, does a lot of things really quite well. Young man's heifer that's going to come next. Uh, uh, she's just a little green, just a little skinny, and uh, I wish we uh, had more turn through that heifer's uh, flank and lower body. Uh, a heifer that I wish had more power, but I love her quality up through her front end. She's so smooth-shouldered and level down her top. A really nice class here uh, of these uh, big bred heifers. Let's go ahead and give them a nice hand as they exit as well. In your pound maker show, your results for class 204 of junior yearling heifers in fourth place, Chase Terry. Third place goes to Jillian and Tessa Nepp. Second place goes to Emma Ganek. And your class winner is Lindsay Strouch. Up next in the pound maker South Devon show, we will have our grand champion and reserve grand champion drive for our judge Colby Hales to evaluate. Over in your miniature Hereford show ring at this time, we have class 105B of winter junior heifer calves. Again, we have entries from Ava Henderson, Mackenzie Weinrich, Canyon Dops, Reagan Emmons, and Carly Allison. Our judge will select our top individuals from this, and we will bring back our first and seconds from this class, as well as class 105A for our judge to select our champion and reserve champion winter junior heifers. Helping out in the Miniature Hereford show, we have our royalty and ambassadors for the Miniature Herefords. Our royalty this year for 23-24, we have our national queen, Abby Eldridge, our princess, Madeline Gonzalez, our junior princess is Journey Harris. Some ambassadors helping out today would be Caleb Spencer, Bristol Pence, Natalie Cartwright, Lexi Heidelbaugh, Walker Wiley, and McKenna Camp. We appreciate our royalty and ambassadors for the Miniature Herefords helping out with today's show. Well, back in our Miniature Hereford ring, we've got a young lady with a heifer out here that I think very logically and sensibly finds her way to the top. She's an eye-catching heifer that you like when she comes in. Her and the heifer in second got my attention pretty quickly. But I think the more that you study this heifer, the more she becomes the winner out here today. She'll hit you good on the side. She hits you good from the rear view. But when she wins the class is when you put them in motion. And between the heifers in first and second, she's the heifer that's more flexible and relaxed in her top and at the ground. She sits down better at her pastern. She's more mobile and more athletic in her hawk and just in her length of stride. And she combines that advantage in soundness with a lot of power and a lot of look. The heifer that I can just look at for days on the stand is this heifer in second. And honestly, when I saw those heifers on that rear view, that heifer won the contest for me. When you get behind her and look down her top, there is so much heifer there. That heifer has a gigantic top and hip in her, and it is so smooth from shoulder down to that hip. I'm like, mm, we got to look at that one. And so I was pretty fired up. And, and again, on the stand, she'll fill your eyes up. I mean, she's a knockout on the stand. All that bone, all that freshness, that length, that pizzazz. 
but the simple fact is, is when you put her in motion, she wants to get up and, and, and get a little tight on those pasterns. That gets up in her top and makes her top rise up. So we just want to loosen her up. But my compliments on a great heifer there, close placing in first and second. You know, this heifer in third is another good one. And she's got some advantages in soundness of structure over that heifer in second. She's better in her pastern, she's looser in her hawk, and she takes a longer step than does our second place heifer. On her own, I love the freshness, I love the femininity, and I love the body. She's good in her top line, she's pretty square and level in that hip. For me in this class, I'd like to see her head match her body a little better. She's a little broad across her face, her forehead for me. Those are maybe a little bit out of balance up in that front end, and I'd like to see a little more bone from that hock down just to kind of complement that big old massive rib cage. But I love the volume, I love the capacity, and I love the soundness of our good third place heifer. Young lady coming around next has got one of the real long bodied heifers in the class. Relative to her height, she is super extended and stretched out. And I'm really, really uh, a fan of length of cattle and body, and she's got it. She too is one of the sound stepping, good moving, long, trap, long striding kind of heifers. Just for me, gives up a little too much balance in a set of real high quality heifers. Not a last place heifer at all here coming around next. Square topped, level in her lines, kind of a heifer, but pretty green out here today, a little bit PC. I think this is one of those heifers that if we have a little patience with, time's sure going to be her friend. Young man, I think her best days are in front of her. Keep working hard with your heifer. Congratulations, exhibitors. Nice job. Now here we are in, in the grand drive of our uh, of our pound maker show, and and obviously again not huge numbers, but uh, golly, there I think there's a lot of really good heifers uh, uh, within this particular breed. Uh, I'm excited to work through the South Devons here in just a little bit, and uh, I'm not going to go through and talk each of these division winners to you. Uh, hopefully, you've kind of understood what I like about each of them within their respective classes. I think each of these divisions uh, do a lot of things really quite well. There's a pair of them, and actually even three. I'm going to tie in three of them uh, that I think get very, very close. Uh, I'm very confident with uh, our, what's going to end up being our champion, and then I think reserve gets tight, but uh, uh, two, uh, no, no doubt, nonetheless, uh, there's three very nice heifers out here that uh, uh, certainly have a chance at champion in reserve. So uh, if you guys would help me, please go ahead and give these exhibitors one nice big round of applause, and I'll go show you my two favorites. In your South Devon Poundmaker show, your grand champion comes from class 204. That is entry 2160 from Lindsay Stroke. Your reserve grand champion comes from class 202 of winter heifer calves. That is entry 2159 from Sierra Steinlicht. Over in your miniature Hereford show, at this time we have our class winners in the ring for our judge to select our champion and reserve grand champion winter junior heifer calves. The results from class 105B of winter heifers. In fifth place was Carly Allison. Fourth place was Ava Henderson. Third place was Reagan Emmons. Second place was Mackenzie Weirich. And your class winner was Canyon Dops. So in the ring for consideration for your champion winter junior heifer calf is Canyon Dops from class 105B. And from class 105A, we have Berkeley Wint.
First and foremost, let's give this division a real nice round of applause. Here's another stout set of them. We're seeing some really, really high quality females and this is a lot of fun out here this morning. So I just, uh, I just offer my congratulations on such good cattle. I think this is an evenly matched pair and I sure hope this doesn't sound like a cop out, but I, I don't know that you can make a wrong decision here. I just wanna explain what I think the real differences are. The heifer that came out of this first class, the darker red heifer, is an extremely good bodied, long-sided, square rumped heifer that I think is about the freshest thing out in this division. I think I, I probably most like that stretch and length that she has with the body mass that she has and the kind of body that she has. Both of these heifers hit me really good in terms of muscle, uh, in terms of bone, in terms of soundness and structure, but I think of the pair, we've got more heifer here in terms of length, just in terms of that body mass. Is she as pencil necked as this heifer that comes next in the second class? No, she's not. This heifer's as cool a fronted one maybe as we've seen all day. From the, the kind of head, the shape of her skull that she has, just that femininity and petiteness up through her face and, and her jaw, down to that neck, her chest, her shoulder blade, she's made about as good right there as you'll want to see one. She too has plenty of body volume to her, plenty of muscle thickness to her, but if we're really going to nitpick these two heifers, I think she's a little lower in her pin setting than the heifer is in front of her. I think she gives up a rib of length compared to that heifer in front of her. And because those are two such important things to me, I'm going to congratulate these two ladies up front. They'll be your division champion. Your champion winter junior heifer calf comes from class 105A, that is entry 4443 from Berkeley Went. Rolling into consideration for the reserve will be the second place from that class, that is entry 4344 from Hannah Hogan. Well, I begin by saying that I didn't think you could make a wrong choice. There's no doubt I'm keeping this pair of heifers together. She'll be reserved. Congratulations. Your reserve champion winter junior heifer calf within the miniature Herford show comes from class 105B. That is entry 4325 from Canyon Dops. At this time, we will get reset in our miniature Herford show, and we will start with class 106 of fall intermediate heifers. Coming into the ring for the Miniature Hereford Show, Class 106 Fall Intermediate Heifers. They have been calved October 1st through de December 31st of 2022. We have five total entries within this class. Ty McIntyre, Piper McIntyre, McKenna Camp, Cal Swamp Creek Farms, and Deacon James. This is the only class within the division, so the first and seconds within this class will become your champion and reserve champion, Fall Intermediate Heifers. A reminder that all cattle releases come from the barn steward shed located between doors 21 and 22 outside. Releases are required to leave the grounds, so if you are done with your classes, you have to seek out a release from the barn steward shed, again located between bar doors 21 and 22 outside. Once again, releases are required to leave the grounds, so if you are looking to leave, seek out a release.
Well, as we get into a new division of some of these older heifers in our mini Hereford show, I think we got a real sensible place to start here with this uh, heifer that's one of the bigger ones in class, but certainly one of the better ones in class. I like her in terms of her balance, her completeness, the way all of her parts and pieces fit together pretty well today. She maintains a lot of soundness in this particular class with good flexibility there at the ground and in her hock. She's a meaty, powerful kind of a heifer that's got good width at both ends of her skeleton. I like the body volume, the top shape, and the muscle thickness that she has, and still puts it in a, uh, an eye-appealing package that's pretty easy to look at. The biggest heifer in the class comes to us in second, and she's a nice one as well. I think a real complete kind of a heifer, lots of performance, lots of length of body, a heifer that when he set her up on the, on the stand, maybe not quite as uh, much wow factor through her front end as the heifers in first and third, a heifer that can hit me as being a little straighter in her pastern, maybe a little straighter in her hawk as she goes around the ring, but she's one that you gotta like really well. Set up on the profile, uh, she's fresh, she's beautifully presented, a real nice heifer to go to us in second. I think the heifer in third is one of the neatest made heifers that we have in the class from a pattern and from a skeleton standpoint. I think she's so good up through the front third of her body. I like the slope of her shoulder. I like the smoothness of her shoulder. I like the way she steps and reaches off of those front legs. She's, she's got height at the point of her shoulder with a lot of levelness and strength through the middle of her back and out through that long square rump. For me, this heifer gives up quite a little bit in terms of bone and mass. She doesn't have as much horsepower in terms of thickness and width as the two heifers in front. I tone her down a little bit in her tail head, but really, really a neat package, a neat made heifer. If you want to watch one here in the next 60, 90 days, I'd keep my eyes on her. I think she's going to get pretty nice. The young lady's heifer coming around next, I think she's just more powerful than the heifer that places below her, especially in that rib cage. Bold in her forerib, real deep in the center part of her body. Today for me, she wants to be quite a little bit lower in her neck set. That takes away from her balance. I like to see her just a little more attractive. Then the young lady that wraps up our class on the end, a real fresh condition kind of a heifer, real green in her, in her flesh out here, presented in a real world kind of a shape. Them two are gonna get to be buddies over the next year, and she'll have days that are a little more fun showing that heifer. How about we congratulate this good group of exhibitors in a new division here in your mini Hereford show. Your results from class 106 of fall intermediate miniature Hereford heifers in fifth place, Ty McIntyre. Fourth place, Piper McIntyre. Third place goes to McKenna Camp. Second place and your reserve fall intermediate heifer is entry 4358 from Deacon James. Your class winner and champion fall intermediate heifer goes to entry 4422 from Cow Swamp Creek Farms. Coming into the ring at this time for the miniature Herefords would be class 107A of summer intermediate heifers. So we get into the purebreds over here on the on the South Devon side. Uh, a nice entry, a nice single entry here. Uh, a heifer, a uh, red heifer that's got plenty of shape and substance and power. Uh, I, I like the turn in that heifer right out of the top and uh, side of her rib uh, and certainly the dimension out of her hip. Uh, she's a little green, she's a little skinny no doubt, but uh, uh, hey, for a little calf, uh, she's got a lot of quality and a lot of shape and a lot of turn. So uh, congratulations to you, young man. We'll see how she stacks up here in just a little bit. Let's give him a nice hand. Back over to your South Devon Poundmakers show in class 101A, your results. The single entry class winner is Chase Terry of Winchester, Kansas. Set to come into the ring at this time is now class 101B of late spring heifer calves. They have calved April 1st through April 30th of 2023. We have three entries within this class. We have an entry from Madison Holtz, Lindsay Stroke, and Megan Felbaum. This completes class 101B of your junior South Devon Heifer Show in the purebred division. 
Over to the miniature Hereford show ring on the north side here. Again, we have class 107A of summer intermediate heifers. These heifers were calved July 1st through September 30th of 2022. We have an entry from Brian Moore, Cal Swamp Creek Farms, McKenna Camp, Amelia Cragen, Carly Allison, and Lindley Jex. That is a completed class 107A of summer intermediate heifers within the miniature Hereford show. As we get into this second class here, uh, another good set of three. Uh, uh, we're going to just reorder them a little different here. Young lady up front is going to go ahead and win. And uh, a heifer that I think her big advantage amongst especially the top pair uh, is structure. I think that heifer is far more comfortable there through her shoulder and her knee. The usage of her hind leg is just a little better. The other big reason she's going to go ahead and win is just her design from the side. She's leveler out of her hip. And like I said, in relation to her structure, she'll actually maintain her top line they're quite a bit better they're in motion uh, a heifer that I think does a lot of good now where I think it does get close is the heifer in second undeniably has more shape and turn and power to her rib cage and through her lower body I think she is very good in that regard and then on top of it boy she gets her parked right here from the side and I love where her neck comes out of her shoulder she's still very smooth shoulder uh, and again I like her turn and I like her power it's where we get her moving that she's gonna go ahead and go second uh, that heifer's a little shorter and rounder out of her hip. I wish we could set her tail head just a little neater into her body, make her a little more comfortable in how she'll go out of her front end and through her shoulder and knee, uh, but certainly a good pair of heifers here on the top end. I think we, that pair gets rather close. And then the young lady's red heifer that's going to go ahead and be third. Young lady, you still have a quality heifer. Uh, that, that's a good female in regards to just uh, her smoothness. She's smooth-shouldered, she's flat-necked, uh, very, very feminine in the shape of her muscle. She's just a little tight-bodied for me. Uh, I wish we could put more turn through the lower third of her body and back through her flank make her just a little sounder structured as she goes away but a great class let's go ahead and give those young people a nice hand your results in the south devon show class 101 b of late spring heifer calves in third place madison holtz second place goes to lindsey strock and your class winner is megan Felbaum. We're going to reset the ring for the South Devons, and we will bring in class 101C of spring heifer calves. These calves were calved March 1st through March 31st of 2023. We'll have a total of three entries within this class. We'll have an entry from Addison Kelm, Megan Felbaum, and Sierra Steinlicht. This completes class 101C within your South Devon show.
this is a really, really, really high quality class, especially between our heifers in first and in second. And I think this is a close placing between the two heifers. But the heifer that I'm going to use to win this is so massive and so powerful and so stout, she just overwhelms the rest of this class in that there is so much of her. And you want to talk about the word shape. Here's a heifer that deserves the word shape used on her, especially from where I'm standing looking down her side like this. You see width and shape and bulge and expression of muscle over her rib and loin. You see width and thickness and fullness from her hooks to her pins. And from there down, she's got so much width uh, right there in the lower part of her hip, at her hock and at the ground. Yet from the side, she's soft-bodied. She's maternal. She's good-shouldered. She's level-hipped. And when you put her in motion, I think she handles herself really well. Although from time to time, she does want to turn that front left out just a little bit. I'm going to accept that today because I don't see it bother the way that she moves. I think that's a real intriguing heifer here to win the class. And by the way, on a side note, our family and I show cattle and play sports. One reason I think showing cattle is better is because we don't have to stand on the sidelines or watch from the bleachers. We can do it together as a family. That's pretty cool. Give these folks a round of applause. The heifer that comes out here in second, I love her on the stand. Boy, she gives you a cool look. She's fresh. She's long. She's square. Look how much heifer there is from the hook bones back. Relative to her size, that one is extraordinarily long-hipped. Just like our class winner, she's thick, she's got shape. I love the arc and spring to her rib, and she wears it well. She probably stands just a little truer and straighter, especially on that front left foot, uh, and she moves around the ring in good shape. But, you know, she's been a little fussy out here right now, but we got a good look at her. The simple fact is she just gets outmeasured by that real massive heifer that wins the class. But certainly this is a heifer that could have won a lot today. The heifer that I really, really want to like, and I try to like, and I do like, but is this heifer in third. I just get such a cowy maternal read on her, and, and it's hard to put in words, but the way her head, her skull, her neck, and her shoulder all blend and transition into that great big rib cage and body, that's good stuff. I think that's mama cow stuff right there. She's so long relative to her height, and you know, you watch this heifer move, and, and when she'll stop fighting and relax, she's pretty good in her top line. But then when you get down to the ground, she gets a little, she gets herself in trouble there on her pasterns. And she wants to get up on her toes today. She wants to pop her pasterns. She's maybe not quite as square as our heifers in first and second in that rump. But boy, there's a lot of good in that one. And there's a lot of maternal in that one. I'm a big fan of that heifer in third. Young man, you've got a heifer coming around here that's going to make you a nice cow. She's got the right kind of size, the right kind of length. I think for her size and, and her kind, she's good bone, she's good muscle. She too's a little tighter in the way she moves out of that hip. She's a little lower in her neck set today, but a lot of good cattle right there. Right parts in the right places, I'd say. Our next two heifers, this is as close of a placing as there is. If you want to flip them around, I get it. I, for, for, for my liking, I think there's a little more bone and a little more soundness in the young man's heifer. Yeah, she's a little low-headed. She herself isn't perfect on those back legs, but I still think she moves with more flexibility. I think she's got a better set to that hawk. And again, I think she's stouter in terms of her structure and her bone work than is the young lady's heifer that comes around next. The young lady's heifer on the profile is the better looking one. She's up, she's more upheaded, she's got a fancier pattern, she's got a better profile, a little more eye appeal. But it's from the kind of from the from a, a structure standpoint, from a movement standpoint, it's where I want to make her better. I'd love to just give her a little more bone and see her handle that back leg with a little more strength. Congratulations, that was a fun class. Well, back on the South Devon side, uh, a, a good class. And, and when I sit and, and watch a show from the sideline or, or have cattle uh, in there myself, I, my, one of the big things that I always try to think about is trying to follow where, uh, where a judge is headed and, and understand their points and understand where they're going. And, and so with that, I, I wanted, this class, I think, deserves a little explanation because the heifer in second is 
probably just a little more my speed and a little more the direction that I've been heading in terms of just her quality up front and her look and her neck. But in this particular class, where I think our class winner has a major advantage, it is to me her structure, her body, and the shape and turn in that heifer is better than the one in second. Uh, I'll tell you first and foremost, the heifer that wins, she is a little rounder shouldered. She does got a little more crest right over the top of her neck. But like I said, her big advantage is once we get her set into motion, the way she'll collect her spine and her top line is far better. To me, the way she'll also collect her lower body balance is more correct and much more attractive. Uh, a heifer that I think does a lot of things really, really well. Uh, uh, that again, uh, to me, she's the better cow long term uh, in this judge's personal opinion, but uh, a good pair of them because again, the heifer that's going to go ahead and win, she is quite a bit fresher and just a little flatter there through the shape of her neck and through her chest. Uh, she's much sharper uh, in terms of her look there through her shoulder and just her front end uh, and uh, just standing still. I think the set of that heifer's hind leg uh, is more attractive, but that's what makes it really interesting is once we get her into motion, that heifer's a little straighter through her shoulder, she's straighter through her knee, and so she'll pull up right in the middle part of her top line, her lower body balance will come off in her just a little bit, and then she'll roll just out of her hip ever so slightly, but a really good pair of heifers there on the top end of that class, I congratulate both of those young ladies, and still a heifer that we're going to round out here in third with, uh, a heifer that's got plenty of body and plenty of fleshing ability. I think she makes a plenty fine enough cow long term. Uh, uh, for this judge personally, once again, she's got a nickel more set to her hind leg. She's a little sharper there to her hawk. And then once we get her in motion, she's the one that probably comes out of balance the most out of any of them. But uh, uh, nonetheless, a very good class. And even though there's just three, we could dice those up a couple different ways. Uh, a very nice class. If you would, please help me in congratulating those young people. Within your South Devon show, your class 101C results. In third place, entry 2167 from Addison Kilm. Second place goes to Sierra Steinlicht. And your class winner goes to entry 2169 from Megan Felbaum. We will bring into the ring at this time in the South Show ring, class 101D of junior heifer calves. This is a single entry class. We have an entry 2171 from Emma Necht. Over to the Miniature Hereford Show, your results from Class 107A. In sixth place was Lindley Jex. Fifth place was McKenna Camp. Fourth place was Carly Allison. Third place, Brian Moore. Second place, Cow Swamp Creek Farms. And your class winner was Amelia Cragen. At this time, in the Miniature Hereford Show, we have Class 107B of Summer Intermediate Heifers. These heifers were calved July 1st through September 30th of 2022. We have five entries in this class. Entry four, Wiley Farm, LLC. Brenna Thorson, Caleb Spencer, Jim Phillips, and Jaden Wilgenbush. This completes class 107B of summer intermediate heifers. We'll jump in here. I know you guys are trying to get a division. We've got a small class. I think we got a real easy winner that comes up here uh, to the top of her class. She's my kind in terms of her size and her length. I love her balance and her eye appeal. Easily the coolest made one, funnest to look at type of heifer that we have. Lots of bone, still handles it well enough in terms of her structure and movement. I think a real nice place to start. 
second and third place heifers get a little closer, and I'm going to use the more moderate heifer of the pair because I think she's got more of the balance and phenotype of our class winner. On the side, on the stand, I think she's better. I think she gives you more look. I think she's classier. I think she's better in her lines. I think she's got a more attractive and better kind of rib shape in her than does our heifer that follows her in third. Third place heifer is no doubt a bigger heifer. She's taller fronted. She's longer sided. She's stretchier and she's got more extension. All things that I love. But on the other side of the coin, she's a little more of a square headed type of a heifer that doesn't have the mass down in that lower rib cage that we see in our heifer in second. Young man's got a real intriguing heifer that comes out next and she just loaded up with power. Gigantic top, thick hip, width at both ends of her skeleton. But then again, when you put her in motion, she struggles more. She wants to drop her hips underneath her. She's got more set to her hock. Simply put, I'd like to see her just move out a little better. The gentleman's heifer that completes the class. Really a fancy headed, feminine fronted kind of a heifer. Really clean in that neck, super good in her chest. A more conventional, more medium sized type of a heifer. But I guess for me, we'd like to just power her up a little bit to see her run with those heifers up at the top of the class. Thank you. Well, back over here on the South Devon side, uh, uh, in this particular division, I think we've got four cattle that uh, end up making it really, really interesting uh, because I think we have four kind of different kinds, if you will. Uh, but just kind of talking them through to you so you can understand where I'm coming from and see my mentality. The heifer that wins this first class in this division, I, I love her structure, I love her build, and I love her skeleton. Uh, uh, that heifer, in regards to just her comfort level, her reach, uh, that's where I think that heifer is very good. Uh, now, uh, if you want to pick on that heifer, uh, she is a little flat. Uh, I do wish we could make her just a little bolder there in terms of her upper rib, the power that she's got going right away, and even chest width. Uh, I think that's, that is where that heifer can be better, but especially between the two class winners, where I do like the heifer that wins that first class, the length of her cannon bone, her maturity, and just kind of her, her phenotypic performance to me uh, is better in that particular regard, and I really like her structure. A nice heifer. The one that's in second there, the reason that pair got close in that class, uh, go ahead and just stay right there, young lady, for just right now. Uh, the young lady that uh, is second in that particular class, boy, she counters that heifer that wins in terms of shape and turn and power. Uh, but, uh, you know, that heifer is a little rounder built, and that's why she she ends up going second, but a really nice class. The young lady with the red heifer. I like that heifer in regards to just her fleshing ability, her body, her structure, uh, her fundamental structure. Uh, now aesthetically, I do think that heifer is a little more upright in her shoulder and down through her knee. Functionally, I think she moves just fine, uh, but uh, you know, once we start kind of picking on that heifer, I think again, she's got a little more crest to the top side of her neck. I wish we could make her a little girlier up there through her front end and her head. Uh, and then even just in regards to her performance, for this judge personally, she is a little quicker pattern. She is a little bit smaller and more moderate in regards to her frame size, but a neat heifer. And then the heifer that's second in that class, she made it very close as well because I love the look she has up through her front end, a very, very well presented heifer that I think's got a good look a little shallower body and, and uh, structurally that heifer isn't quite as right up through her shoulder and her front end so that's the way the way I see these heifers and where I think it can get rather close and it gets rather challenging to me the heifers that uh, just suit me just a little better are the two out of the first class who go ahead and be champion and reserve within this division let's congratulate those two young ladies on a job well done and now in our division lineup in the mini Hereford show a great pair of heifers my goodness, our divisions have been good out here this morning, and, and this continues to be the case. Uh, the couple's uh, heifer here out of that first class is ultra, ultra powerful. Gigantic top and hip, good bone, good leg set, but especially powerful in her rib cage. Between the two heifers, she's really dominant in terms of her body mass, her depth of rib, and her volume. I don't not, not only like the amount of body that she has, but the kind of body that it has. I think it lends to her a more maternal look, a more cowy look, and I'm really drawn to her because of that. We mentioned in class that she might stand just a little truer on that front left, but I don't see any problems at all with the way that heifer stretches and flexes and moves. This is a real a striking, attractive, sharp-made kind of a heifer here out of the second class. 
ultra good in her lines. She's so tall at the point of her shoulder, so much strength and levelness down the middle of her back and out that nice long square hip, and then she comes down to a gigantic leg. Few heifers we've seen today can match her in terms of the bone and the stoutness that she has, and I really think you have to take that into consideration. On the other side of the coin, you also have to recognize this heifer's a little tighter in her rib. She's not as drop down and massive in the lower third of her body. And so for those reasons, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the heifer out of the first class. They'll be your division champions, followed up by the heifers in second. Congratulations, folks. Good job, sweetheart. Good job. Your champion summer intermediate heifer comes from class 107A. That is entry 4322 from Amelia Cragen. Your reserve summer intermediate heifer comes from class 107B. That is entry 4435 from Brenna Thorson. Just a single entry class here, but a, a very good single entry. Uh, I think uh, this heifer, uh, start her at the ground, just the shape of her feet, her stoutness of feature, and her substance and her power I think is good, yet she still offers a really good look there from the side. And, and uh, I think once you get right behind this heifer, she's actually really neat in just the, the extra width and the extra power she's got to her upper hip and her pin set. You guys sitting along ringside right there can, can get the best view of her there. Uh, I think she is really powerful. She's got a great turn and a great shape, uh, a neat looking feminine heifer here. So. Uh, uh, let's go ahead and give our nice single entry a nice hand. Uh, we'll go ahead and see how she stacks up here in a while. Over in your junior South Devon Heifer Show in Class 101D, which was in the ring, which was Junior Heifer Calves in first place. Entry 2171 from Emma Knecht. At, the, at this time, we have in the ring Class 102, which is Senior Heifer Calves. This is a single entry kick class. This entry is from Chase Terry of Winchester, Kansas. This Heifer has calved April 1st through December 31st of 2022. Over inside your miniature Hereford show, we have class 108A of spring intermediate heifers. These heifers were calved April 1st through June 30th of 2022. We have six entries in this class. We have Brian Moore, Callie Rummel, Hannah Hogan, Jackson Place, Flora Insico, and four Wiley Farms. These complete your classes of in the ring at this time. Single entry red heifer here uh, in our senior heifer calves and uh, a heifer that I think uh, does some things really, really well. Beautiful fronted, beautiful necked, very, very smooth shouldered and, and yet still has a really good turn right out of the upper side of her rib. Uh, a heifer that I still like her stoutness of feature and her power. Uh, a nice heifer here in a nice single entry class. Let's go ahead and give him a hand. Results from class 102 of senior heifer calves within your South Devon show in first place. Entry at 2172 from Chase Terry. Set to enter the ring at this time would now be class 104. These will be junior yearling heifers calved January 1st through April 30th of 2022. We have an entry from Sierra Steinlicht, Megan Fellbaum, Jillian Nepp, Addison Kelm, and Lauren Zabel. This is your five entries making up class 104 within your South Devon show.
while our judges Jake Scott for the miniature Herefords and Colby Hales for the South Devons continue evaluating the classes. The 2024 National Western Stock Show wouldn't be made possible without our generous sponsors. Some of those sponsors include Saunders Construction. Saunders Construction was locally founded in 1972 and is now one of the largest and most stable construction companies in this centennial state. Saunders offers well-paid positions with opportunities for career growth. Visit www.sandersinc.com for information on career opportunities. Another sponsor is the Colorado Farm Show. The Colorado Farm Show is proud to support the National Western Stock Show, and they invite you to attend the 58th Colorado Farm Show, taking place January 23rd, 24th, and 25th at the Island Grove Regional Event Center in Greeley, Colorado. Colorado Farm Show brochures are available ringside or at the announcer stand. Complete details are also online at coloradofarmshow.com. I apologize for the extra time in this class. Thanks to the exhibitors for accommodating me on an extra look, but uh, we'll get to that part of the discussion a little later. Real easy winner for me in this class. She's stout, she's stylish, she's sound, she's high quality. She's really, really presented nicely. She's in a fun to look at package, but there's just a lot of positives in this heifer. We could say a lot of things about her and it would all be good. This is a real good place to start. We jump into that heifer in second, and she's fussy. She's, she's not wanting to cooperate out here. But when you get a good read on her, and, and I have, when you see her stopped and set up, there's a lot of positives. Now, she's a more moderate built heifer, a little more traditional sized heifer than our class winner, but she is loaded up with power. Huge top and hip, lots of width to that body. She's really got that classic wide body, mini Hereford shape with good depth to her fore rib, good center body depth, and still puts it together in a cool package. Not as extended overall, not as stretched out, maybe not as much bone or, um, or quite the power in the set of that hind leg as our class winner, but a real nice one there in second. The reason we spent more time on the class is because of the heifers coming in third, fourth, and fifth. This is a challenging lineup to get this trio right. And if you want to reshuffle the deck, go for it. You can make a case for it. Here's the way I see them today. The heifer that I've got pulled out here next is a little more the kind I've been using in terms of the balance and the eye appeal and the look. She's a little more my kind in terms of the length and the stature that she has versus the more moderate heifer below her. I like the eye appeal. I like just that look she gives you from the side. Is she the soundest of those? No, she's not. She's a little straighter on both ends. I'd like to loosen her up, and we could soften her up just a touch in terms of her body, especially compared to her taller frame size. I think that's an advantage for the more moderate heifer. I think she's sounder. I do think she's a little deeper, but she carries that muscle in a harder, tighter package. She just comes down her top with me with just a little too much shape if there's such a thing. She just wants to roll up a little bit there in the middle of her back, not as square in that hip with that extra muscle. And again, a little more compact, whether you like that or not. But for me, I'd like to just stretch her out. But I like the soundness, I like the thickness. Big, cowy, stout one here coming out next. I don't know that we've seen a heifer all day with that kind of body shape in her. She's absolutely massive in terms of her body volume and her capacity. I love the length that, that she has on her. And she's one of the heifers that I really wanted to see again. Because I'll be honest, I misread her a little bit right off the bat in terms of condition. The more I look at this heifer, the more I think she's pretty honest in her condition. At first, I thought she's carrying a bunch, but really look at her in her chest and in the lower third. I think she's real honest in her condition. The, the issue that I have with her is at the ground. If we could change her in terms of her structure and her bone work, I mean, this one's knocking on the door to win the class. I love the body, I love her on the stand, but she really complicates things for me when we see her move around the ring, and that's where I'd want to see her better today. But that trio of heifers right there, that's a dogfight, and you could do them anyway. Nice set of heifers. The young lady that wraps up the class here got another real muscular heifer. I like her size. I like that big old top that she brings to this class. But again, she's one that gets a little more complicated, gives us more issues from a structure standpoint. I'd just like to loosen her up today. Thanks for a little more time on that class. Give them a nice round of applause. 
Well, back over here on the South Devon side, uh, gosh, a great yearling, uh, yearling heifer class, Big Brad heifer class here. Uh, I think uh, another class that, especially amongst these top pair, I think they warrant a little bit of discussion. And, and specifically, where I think that where both of them are good is their balance and their look, their quality. Are they different in that regard? Absolutely they are. But I think they're both good there. Uh, now, I think the big difference and why I end up using that heifer that I do to win this class is you get right directly behind those heifers and watch them go away. To me, the heifer that wins is square and how she plant her hock. I think she's more attractive in the set of her hind leg. I think she's truer in her base width and, and, and the actual width that she has all the way through. I like the shape and the turn of her body, a heifer that I think is very, very feminine, very attractive. Now, between the pair, she does have a little more chest. She's got just a, she's a little thicker and a little rounder there about the shape of her neck. I personally still think she's very, very feminine, but that is kind of her problem and why I think you can make that pair close. To me, the heifer that wins is just a little more basic and just a little more fundamental to go ahead and win this particular class. The heifer that's in second, she probably has as much of the wow factor as maybe any of them. I think she is a very, very neat breeding piece because she has really big, good square feet. That heifer's neck sits right out of the top side of her shoulder. I think she's very attractive in the shape of her head. A heifer that has punch and has substance and has power. Like I said, once you get right in behind those cattle and watch them go directly away from you, that heifer really wants to pull her hock in there from behind. I think that heifer's got a little more set to her hind leg. To me, it detracts away from her balance once we get her set into motion. So that's why I end up leaving her second. But boy, a really good pair of heifers there on the top end of this class. The heifer that's in third is another one that uh, I think again you talk about just being good and, and a basic kind of a beef cow that's where I think she's good she's deep bodied she's easy fleshing where I wish we could change her up is I want to change the shape of her feet. That heifer gets a little long toed for me. She'll start to get a little curly in the set of her feet up front. Uh, and especially in relation to those other two, she's probably just a little plainer in terms of her look. But uh, again, a good basic kind of a female there to go for, or to go uh, wind up in third. Young lady with the black heifer, I think that is a decision there between third and fourth because I think you have a very nice heifer uh, that winds up fourth in this class. She sounds structured, she's good built, a level built, really attractive kind of a heifer there uh, that uh, does have the advantage between that pair in the squareness to her feet. Now, same deal with that. I think that heifer, once you get in behind her, she's flatter and she doesn't quite have as much power, just substance and punch there. Also, just a little coarse there in the shape and structure of her teat uh, in terms of her udder. But boy, another really nice heifer there for the young lady. I wish her the best of luck with that heifer down the road once she goes into production. And then the young lady's red heifer that's gonna go ahead and round us out. Initially, when she first came in, boy, she hits me with a ton of power, a lot of substance and, and just uh, uh, outright shape and turn. The longer we go here, and especially once we get him on, on the first lap, that heifer is the tightest in regards to her structure. Uh, that heifer, I also wish we could freshen up in terms of her body condition, especially through the lower third of her body. That's why I end up leaving her fifth within this class, but certainly a nice female that I wish you the best of luck. Let's congratulate those young people here in that yearling class on a job well done. Your results from class 104 of junior yearling heifers within your South Devon show in fifth place entry 2175 from Addison Kiln. Fourth place entry 2168 from Jillian Nepp Mount. Third place goes to 2174, that is Megan Fellbaum. Second place entry 2176 from Lauren Zabel. And your class winner is entry 2173 from Sierra Steinlicht. At this time, we will bring back some of our first and seconds for our grand champion and reserve champion South Devon Junior Heifer selections. Back over to the North Show ring for the miniature Hereford Show. The results from Class 108A. In sixth place, we had Flora Ensico. Fifth place, Jackson Place. Fourth place for Wiley Farm LLC. Third place, Brian Moore. Second place, Callie Rummel. And your class winner goes to Hannah Hogan. In the ring at this time is now class 108B of Spring Intermediate Heifers. We have an entry from Piper McIntyre, Jim Phillips, John Carter, Mesa Arnold, Ada Pence, and Blake Buck.
Well, this dark red heifer that starts off her class of many Hereford heifers is a nice one, and I think she's really nice on the stand. She's big. She's extremely long-sided and extended. She's very well presented. She's fresh in her, in her look and in her hair coat. She's got a good body shape to her. Again, I love all the stretch and extension. Good muscle shape in that heifer. She's a, she's a heifer that we've seen uh, cattle that are sounder today. She just wants to kind of waddle, and, and there's a tight to her that I'd like to change if we could just loosen her up and give her a little more freedom but still yet I think she's high quality I think she's nicely balanced and she brings enough positives to the table that we're going to go ahead and use her to win the class a slightly more moderate heifer is going to end up placing second in what I think is a close pair between second and third this is a stout featured heifer I like her shape I like her body and I like her bone she's really a massive kind of heifer in terms of the width that she has at both ends She's very, very stout structured. What she's not is as elegant and ladylike as the heifers in first and third. If we could just stretch her out from end to end, set her neck up a little better on her shoulder, I think that'd be a game changer for that heifer. As a judge and somebody that shows cattle, you can't help but daydream about what if. And this is a what if heifer for me in third. What if you could get your hands on her and, and just take her for yourself and take her home for your kids to show. There's one that I think is intriguing. Today she's pretty green. She's very, very youthful. But man, has she got the right pieces in the right places. She's as good balanced and as good patterned as that first place heifer. She's as sound structured as anything that we have in here. She doesn't get a chance to show herself off a whole lot. But I guarantee you, I, that is one that I'd put my money on for the long run right there. I think that's a real intriguing heifer in third. Then a big old massive heifer is going to come around next. She's got size and she's got power. She's got tremendous body and volume and capacity. She's big bone and she's thick from end to end. What she's not is the fanciest heifer in terms of her femininity and look. I'd like to just sweeten her up in that front end. And she too's one that could move a little bit looser for us today. The pair that's coming out next, the pair of exhibitors who's coming out next, nice job today. The pair of exhibitors who's coming out next have got a, a, a real practical kind of a heifer that's got a lot of that length of body that I like to see. I really appreciate the stretch and the extension that she has. She's a tall fronted heifer and she maintains that height real evenly from front to rear. She's one that wants to drop her rump a little bit, get her back legs underneath her. She too could have better balance. Young man that's uh, wrapping up this class. I guarantee you he has done a good job with the heifer. That's the whitest white we've seen on a lot. Her hair's worked really nicely. This isn't a fitting contest, but you can't help but brag on a kid that's done a good job taking care of that heifer. She's fresh. She's not over conditioned. Good job with the way you've managed her, young man. Congratulations to this set of kid kids. Well, folks, uh, here we are, champion drive uh, of the South Devon show. Uh, been a fun day, and I know we still have showmanship to work through here, but uh, a really fun day. Uh, the big, or I guess to start really quick, and not to make a big spiel by any stretch, but uh, big thank you to the National Western uh, for uh, allowing me to judge not only yesterday, but today. Uh, sincerely appreciate that. As a kid who, uh, I've, I've never missed the National Western. Uh, uh, this is my 29th National Western stock show, uh, and, and so uh, I've, I've gone here and I've dreamed about getting to, uh, uh, to grab a hold of a microphone in, in this ring and, and even though uh, you know just working through uh, uh, you know these shows it's so cool for me and heck even as a kid that that watches shows and, and especially co or coaches a judging team uh, you know it's neat uh, to even get the opportunity uh, to share the ring with Jake Scott over on the other side to me that is that is so cool and so thank you to the National Western for allowing me to do that uh, but man a, a really really good set uh, you guys in the South Devon breed should be proud uh, of the cattle that uh, uh, that that you put in front of in front of me today and the cattle that you're raising uh, uh, this is a, a show that uh, I was interested to see what we'd get and uh, to you guys in the South Devon breed kudos to you and congratulations to you keep the pedal to the floor and, and keep making cattle like this uh, uh, congratulations to you there the other thing that I think is cool amongst your breed is I, I've kind of not uh, not paid attention to the side of the ring a ton uh, but I do think it is really cool kind of the the brotherhood 
that happens back there. I think that is a really neat thing within this particular breed. So kudos to you on that. Uh, a good set of heifers out here. And uh, uh, for me, there's two of them uh, that are that are going to play in contention for champion of reserve. And even though there's cattle that I think are very good, there's two of them that are going to play here. Uh, so with that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit talking so we can get into showmanship. Uh, but uh, even more importantly than that, show you the two South Devon heifers that I like out here. So let's go ahead and give these young people a big round of applause. Best of luck uh, in your open show tomorrow. Best of luck in your bull sales this spring. A great job to these young people. Your grand champion South Devon Junior Heifer comes from Sierra Steinlicht. Your reserve grand champion, South Devon Junior Heifer, also comes from that same class. That is class 104. That is Lauren Zabel. Now we'll hear from our judge, Jake Scott, over to the miniature Hereford show. For our mini Hereford enthusiasts, put your hands together for this fine division right here. Good job to these kids. I think this is an evenly matched set of heifers. Uh, there's a lot of things that you like about both of them, a lot of the same things you like about both of them. I like their size, I like their length. I think they're very comparable in terms of their muscle shape, the bone that they have, and they're just kind of similar in terms of type and kind. It's the differences that's gonna sort them today, and here's the differences that I see. For as much as I like the length and the power and the substance, you'd have to acknowledge that the heifer up here in the front is maybe not as tidy in her front end as maybe that heifer is uh, right behind her, maybe just a little more shoulder to her, just not as cool and cocky of a look sometimes, but don't hear me say that there's anything wrong with her front end. I think she's real nicely balanced. The gentleman's young man's heifer here that comes next. Lots of power and lots of shape to her, but I think you'd also agree that when you put her in motion, there's a little difference in the structure and the looseness of the skeleton in those heifers. She's a little tighter than what I prefer in the way that she moves. And so because this heifer, I think, is just better at the ground and has so much good to her from a power standpoint, she's going to be your division champion. Nice job. Then as we look at the young lady in the jacket back here for reserve, powerfully built heifer, a more conventional, traditional heifer in terms of her height and in terms of her length, but it's hard for me to get away from the extension and the power and the stretch of the dark red heifer. Young man, she's your reserve division. Your champion spring intermediate heifer comes from class 108A. That is entry 4343 from Hannah Hogan. The reserve spring intermediate heifer comes from class 108B, that is entry 4288 from Blake Buck. We'll go ahead and get our ring reset over in our miniature Herefords, and we'll start with class 109 of winter intermediate heifers.
Miniature Hereford Show in the ring as Class 109. These are winner intermediate heifers. They have calved January 1st through March 31st of 2022. We have three entries within this class. We have an entry from Deacon James, Bryce White, and Connor Neal. These three animals are the only animals within the division. So the first and seconds within this class will become your champion and reserve champion winter intermediate heifers. Well, if you have my job today, uh, I think the decision that you have to, to make and the question you have to ask yourself is the importance of power and, and cowiness. And uh, it, once you make that decision, I think this is the heifer that ends up winning the class. She is the most powerful heifer, especially between the two heifers in first and second here. Uh, she's so much better in terms of her body, top and width of pins, just the power, the squareness, and the shape that she has from front to rear totally is intriguing to me. And I think she still handles all that power well in terms of the way she moves, her structural soundness, her flexibility and length. Is she as long fronted and clean chested as the heifer in second? No, she isn't. And that's what makes this a close pair. And young man, you've got a beautifully designed heifer here. Go ahead and pull her around here and show her off. You've got a beautifully designed heifer here that uh, absolutely is perfectly fit and um, and presented very, very nicely today. I love that about her. She is longer necked, she is flatter shouldered, she is prettier headed, and she is cleaner chested than our class winner. Don't hear me say that this is a light muscled or light bodied heifer, but by comparison, she does get out measured by that more powerful, more massive heifer in first. And particularly for me, when you get behind her, it's the width from hooks to pins, maybe the depth of quarter that you see, the difference in those two heifers is where I really make up my mind. I love your heifer, she's striking, and if you want a real pretty one, she's the pretty one in class. And then young man, you drew up in kind of a buzzsaw kind of a class here. Uh, you've got a dang nice one. You're not showing a last place heifer 
She's wide, she's thick, she's got a great top and a square hip. Today, not as pretty as the heifer in second, not as powerful as the heifer in first, so she's going to end up third, but you're going to leave the ring leading a dang nice one. Keep your head held high. Congrats. Your results from class 109 of winter intermediate heifers in third place, entry 4359 from Deacon James. Second place and the reserve winter intermediate heifer, entry 4394 from Connor Neal. And your class winner and champion winter intermediate heifer goes to entry 4447 from Bryce White. At this time, we will now bring back all of our division champions for our judge, Mr. Jake Scott, to select the grand champion and reserve grand champion, Heifers. In your miniature Hereford show, returning for your grand champion female in coming in would be your champion fall junior heifer calf. That is entry 4395 from Connor Neal. Your champion summer junior heifer calf is entry 4323 from Canyon Dops. Your champion spring junior heifer calf, entry 4434 from Brenna Thorson. Your champion early spring junior heifer calf, entry 4451 from Bryce White. Your champion winter junior heifer calf, entry 4443 from Berkeley Went. Your champion fall intermediate heifer, entry 4422 from Cow Swamp Creek Farms. Your champion summer intermediate heifer, entry 4322 from Amelia Cragen. Your champion spring intermediate heifer, entry 4343 from Hannah Hogan. 
And your champion winter intermediate heifer, entry 4447 from Bryce White. These are the champions that are in consideration for your grand champion heifers. Your reserve champions that are in contention for the reserve grand champion, your reserve fall junior heifer calf, entry 4438 from Brenna Thorson. Your reserve summer junior heifer calf, entry 4287 from Briggs Miller Ranch. Your reserve spring junior heifer calf, entry 4403 from Bristol Pence. Your reserve early spring junior heifer calf, entry 4450 from Bryce White. Your reserve winter junior heifer calf, entry 4325 from Canyon Dops. Your reserve fall intermediate heifer, entry 4358 from Deacon James. Your reserve summer intermediate heifer, entry 4435 from Brenna Thorson. Your reserve spring intermediate heifer, entry 4288 from Blake Buck. And your reserve winter intermediate heifer is entry 4394 from Connor Neal. These are the champions in contention for your grand champion and reserve grand champion, Miniature Hereford Heifer. As we get into senior showmanship here on the South Devon side, uh, a great set of showmen, a really great set of showmen. I, I think uh, uh, the hardest part about showmanship is it's so subjective, and you could have a lot of different opinions for a lot of different things. And so throughout the day, uh, uh, understand uh, this is just my opinion on, on who I think the best showmen are, because realistically, I think we could make an argument for several of these young people to be champion in reserve. Uh, I'm not going to go through and necessarily talk each individual kid. I will say uh, just a couple big group comments on, on some things that I, I appreciate and that I like is, is again, obviously making sure uh, that show side hind leg is further back than the offside, uh, keeping their top line correct and level, their head up and right, and then how you hold your halter is something that's important to me as well. Uh, you know, keeping, uh, keeping your palm up, if you will, uh, on how you hold your halter. And then on top of it, you have to have some showmanship and kind of some, some pizzazz, for a lack of a better way to put it. I think there's a couple young people out here that do a very very nice job of that the two that suit me the best is going to go ahead and be the young lady up front I think she's done a great job she'll go ahead and be your champion here today so congratulations to you young lady And then the other one that suits me very, very well, uh, she might have not got along necessarily the best in every class throughout our heifer show today, but I think she's a very good showman. Young lady with the red heifer, you'll go ahead and be reserved. Congratulations to you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we move now into our selection of the grand champion miniature Hereford female here at the National Western Stock Show, the first thing I'd like for you to do is to give every exhibitor you've seen come through this ring here today a really well-deserved round of applause. What an awesome show. It's been a great morning, and it's always a great privilege as a judge of, of any breed, but particularly these many Herefords, to be asked to share your opinion. I tell you what, it'll make a better evaluator out of you. Your cattle are so evenly matched in so many of the classes, you've got to cinch your, uh, your hat down pretty tight and study these cattle and do a lot of thinking out here in the ring because sometimes the differences are pretty subtle and I think that says a lot to the depth of quality in your breed and how much, how many of the cattle have so many of the important traits, the basics, the foundational traits that make cattle good. In lieu of talking about all the cattle again, I've tried to be very thorough with my descriptions, but before we select your champions, I just want to compliment your breed on how well of a job I think you guys have done building your show program. As much as any breed that I have the chance to evaluate, in my opinion, I think your miniature Hereford breed is perhaps the most family-oriented breed 
that we have in the industry today. If you're willing and open-minded enough to start your kids when they're knee-high. Now maybe mom or dad or brother or sister has to help lead them in here, but if we're not getting these kids interested and started at an early age, there's a thousand other things that are competing for their attention. So I think it's a real smart play on the part of your leadership to get your youth involved and hooked at such an early age. And then you see your juniors, and there's such a large group of juniors here in every one of these open classes, but also the adults are so active and so involved. I, I really hope, and I want to mention again, even if you know this, you should hear it again, boy, these things don't happen by themselves. Building a program like that, getting the kind of foundation underneath you guys that you have takes a lot of leadership and it takes a lot of participation and you guys have got it all going for you right now I really want to encourage you to keep that momentum going you guys have something that's very special you have something that's very different and you have something that's very unique and just as an outside observer I'm very envious and I'm very proud for all you folks, and I'm very, very happy to see what you got going on here. In a world that seems to have gone crazy, this is really encouraging. This is really positive. This is the one place in my life that feels real normal these days when we come to a stock show. I love the people involved. I love the breed that you guys have got going here. Um, the cattle speak for themselves. I've tried to describe them. But I just want to give you guys a, a huge pat on the back for what you've got going on. I hope you make as much progress in the next 10 years that you've made in the last 10 years. We've got more cattle to judge today, but before we got any farther, I just wanted to make those comments to you guys. Give yourselves a round of applause. We'll find, yourself, we'll find you a champion. Your grand champion heifer is also your champion winter junior heifer. That is entry 4443 from Berkeley Went. Rolling into consideration for the reserve will be the reserve winter junior heifer calf. Entry 4325 from Kenyon Dops. Your reserve grand champion heifer comes from your champion summer intermediate heifer division. That is entry 4322 from Amelia Cragen. At this time, we will roll right into our cow-calf pairs before we start any pictures. So again, we're rolling right into our cow-calf pairs within our miniature Hereford show. Well, over here on the South Devon Ring, as we get into junior showmanship here, three good young people, uh, three really good young people that have done a good job all morning. Uh, and so I, I congratulate all of them. And just kind of uh, briefly talking through, since we just have the three and they're the youngest group we've got, I'll share my opinion, probably just a little heavier than maybe what I did in the seniors there. Young lady here at the back with the red heifer, great job. Uh, I think that young lady, she's got a heifer calf. Uh, she's not your dancing partner today. She, uh, she, she wants to fight you pretty hard. But young lady, you're doing a good job once you get her stuck I, I think she looks the part uh, you do a great job of making sure that heifer's presented very very well she just wants to fight you maybe a little hard but uh, good job to you and then a young man right in the middle uh, the lone boy of the group here uh, I think does a really good job as well uh, where feet and legs are positioned and set up I think he does great uh, that heifer looks the part uh, uh, you know I think one thing that we could change up maybe just a little bit is is it, 
bump up the intensity just a little bit, just to get her head up, just a little more, because that's that heifer's problem is she's got a little more chest, she's got a, she's a little deeper through her neck, and so if we can get her head up and make her look just a little bit more arrogant, a little more proud, to me that helps that heifer's look come together a lot better. But young man, you do a good job, best of luck to you. Then the young lady there up front, I think another one that uh, uh, all throughout the day, all throughout the morning that we've gotten to see these young people, she's had that heifer looking very, very well, uh, where her head and her neck are positioned, how she holds her halter is good, how she handles her stick is really good. So uh, a really good set of young people here in junior showmanship, and no matter how this shakes out, I hope everybody can give them a great big congratulations here on a job well done, the way I like them. Young lady, you're going to go ahead and be our champion. Young man, you'll go ahead and be reserved. Congratulations to these young people here on a job well done. Congratulations to our South Devon and Poundmakers show exhibitors. This does conclude the portion of today's events for the South Devon show. A reminder that all cattle releases come from the barn steward shed located between doors 21 and 22 outside. The releases are required to leave the grounds. So again, any exhibitors looking to leave, you must seek out a cattle release from the barn steward shed located between bars, barn doors 21 and 22 outside. We will kick things back off here at our miniature Hereford show. We have in the ring at this time now class 301. These are cow-calf pairs of miniature Herefords. Any female older than the age with a calf at its side. We have two entries. We have an entry from John Carter, and we have an entry from Seal Livestock. This is class 301 of cow-calf pairs. We're going to have a little mercy with our cow-calf exhibitors here and not make them wall or them around. The darker cow is the cow I'm going to use to win here in front of me. I think a cow that um, probably there's just more to her in terms of her mass and her body and her substance, but along with that, she's nicer balanced in terms of her femininity, the cleanliness up through her front, uh, front third. Although I'd like to see both of these cows with a more level udder, I probably prefer the teat size better on this cow than, than I do the cow in second. And I think that's a pretty neat calf walking along uh, behind her there. I think that one's got some future. Uh, the, the young couple here that's showing the, the, the cow, the pair in reserve, really a good boned kind of a cow. A lot of stoutness of structure. And, and one thing that I always like to see is when you see something positive in one of these cows, and they can transmit it to their calves, that's a real valuable asset. And that cow's been able to take that foot and that bone that she has and put it right in that good calf. And boy, if she'll do that consistently every year, you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with that pair. Congratulations to both exhibitors. Your results from the cow-calf pair class, 301. In second place, we have John Carter. And your class winner entry 4331 from Seal Livestock. Set to come into the ring at this time now will be class 401, pair of females. We're not doing pair of females, we're pausing for pictures. So we will pause with our judge, Jake Scott, as he will walk over and take pictures with the champions. 
So we will pick right back up from there with our bull show and everything else that follows. So 10, 15 minute break for our judges to get pictures with the exhibitors.
attention exhibitors, parents, and stock show goers. If you want to be involved in the 50-50 raffle presented by the Miniature Hereford Association, you can see some of the royalty walking around the stadium arena. They will be taking your money and putting your name in the bucket for the 50-50 raffle. You'll have a chance to win some money, from what I understand. So this is your last chance. If you want to be entered into the 50-50 raffle, open up your wallets and your purses, throw some money in the bucket, and get entered into the 50-50 raffle. You'll have a chance to win 50% of the pot. So again, if you're looking to be entered into the 50-50 raffle, when the girls walk around, all the royalty, dump some money in and get yourself a chance to win some money in return. It's not official, but I'm assuming that the proceeds of the 50-50 raffle go back to the Miniature Hereford Association. So anything that you donate definitely does help the association. So please, again, support the Miniature Hereford Association and the royalties.
We welcome everybody back inside the ring for the miniature Hereford show. In the ring at this time is now class 401. This is a pair of females, two females bred and owned by the exhibitor. We have a total of six entries. We have an entry from Hat City Cattle Company, Roma Ensco, Brian Moore, Ada Pence, Bryce White, and for Wiley Farm LLC. This is your completed class of pair of females in your miniature Hereford show, class 401. Well, your pair of heifer show gets real interesting, and uh, boy, there's sure not a right answer to this, in my opinion, because there's individuals in each one of these pairs from one end of the ring to the next that I like real well. But the ladies down here, to my left, your right, if you're at ringside, I think's got the most evenly matched pair that brings a, uh, the most cumulative quality out here to this competition. And it's a unique competition. You know, I try and take into consideration the uniformity of type and kind of these cattle. And I think they go together real, real well. These cattle in second, same thing. I, I think there's just a lot of similarities in uniformity and consistency to them. I like both of those heifers. You know, we talked about that one heifer in class, just that maternal body shape she has. And I'm, I'm still drawn to that even out here in this competition. Young men right here, they, that is an evenly matched set of heifers. Now, they're, they're one of the more traditional, uh, more moderate frame uh, pairs that we have out here, but I like them. They're thick, they're meaty, they're beef cattle. Uh, there's a real interesting heifer in this set right here, and a heifer I think we had second earlier in the show today, but just massive bodied. Um, those are intriguing heifers. It's got a lot of good parts and pieces to them. And then the young couple down here, uh, boy, I, th th these may have as much future as any. They, they're in here with some older cattle today, which might give them a slight disadvantage, but this isn't... Uh, by any means a last place placing. Uh, I think these are just gonna be a blast to watch grow and to work with. I wish you the best of luck, girls.
your results from class 401, your top five entries. In fifth place, entry 4401, Ada Pence. Fourth place, Hat City Cattle Company. Third place, entry 4454 from 4 Wiley Farm, LLC. Second place, entry 4386, Brian Moore. And your class winner is entry 4448 from Bryce White. At this time, we will now bring in our bulls for the bull portion of our show. We will have class 201 of fall junior bull calves calved July 1st through December 31st of 2023. We have a total of three entries within this class. We have two entries from Seal Livestock and an entry from Brenna Thorson. These three entries make up class 201 of fall junior bull calves. The first and seconds within this class will make up your champion and reserve champion fall junior bull calves. Sometimes hard to get these young calves to cooperate, but we've had a good chance to get a good look at them. Nice set of bulls to start them off, uh, start our, our bull show off with, but this one that wins the class is pretty darn neat. Uh, boy, he'll really give you a striking look from the side. Crazy good fronted, really upheaded, really good necked, really long necked. Goes back into a good shoulder, super strong in his top line, a long bodied bull that's sure got plenty of meat and muscle, and he's especially square in terms of uh, pin width. But what separates the two bulls for me uh, especially is the soundness of structure. You watch this bull move out, looser off both ends, and I really appreciate that about him. Young man's bull in seconds, a real high growth individual. He's the biggest one in the class. He's got the most height, he's got the most stature, and just like our class winner, there's good muscle shape in that bull. I like his thickness. His muscle comes in a little rounder package. He's not as square in his hip, and as I mentioned, it also tightens him up a little bit in the way that he moves. I just loosen him up, but I love his performance and his size and his length. Young man, you got a good looking little bull there. Good headed rascal, super clean fronted and good chested. I know he's awfully, awfully young, but he's made really, really neat. He's square, he's level, he's got balance. Probably moves out a little better today than the bull in front of him. For my taste, he just gets out measured in terms of his size today. Good start to our bull show, congrats. Your results from Class 201 of Fall Junior Bull Calves in the Miniature Hereford Show in third place, entry 4329 from Seal Livestock. In second place, entry 4330 from Seal Livestock. That animal becomes your reserve champion Fall Junior Bull Calf. And your class winner and now your champion Fall Junior Bull Calf is entry 4437 from Brenna Thorson. At this time, we will bring into the ring Class 202 of Summer Junior Bull Calves. These bull calves were calved May 1st through June 30th of 2023. We have two entries in this class. We have an entry from McKenna Camp and Caleb Spencer. These two bull calves are the only bull calves within this division. So first and second in this class, 202, becomes your champion and reserve champion summer junior bulls.
As our exhibitors get situated into position here, we're going to use the young man in the cowboy hat as your class winner. This is an evenly matched set of bulls, and I would say that in a perfect world, we could maybe combine the best parts and pieces of each of these into one. But that being said, this one's stouter. He's got more mass, he's got more body, he's got more muscle, and he's got more thickness. And because of that, we're going to use him to be the winner. But in, in doing so, we're going to realize that I wish he had the length, I wish he had the freedom of movement, the looseness of structure that we see in the young man's dark red bull here that comes to us in second. Certainly, I like him a little better from a profile standpoint, especially in his shoulder and his top line. When you put him in motion, walk him around the ring, he reaches out and grabs a lot more country with a longer stride but I think the biggest reason for that is because he doesn't have as much muscle in him he's a little narrower a little flatter got plenty of set to that back leg so again we might kind of take the best parts and pieces of both of those into one but real good individuals in their own right nice job guys the results from class 202 of summer junior bull calves miniature Herefords in second place and your reserve champion summer junior bull calf entry 4292 from McKenna Camp. Your class winner and champion summer junior bull calf goes to entry 4426 from Caleb Spencer. Coming into the ring is now class 203. These are spring junior bull calves. They were calved April 1st through the 30th of 2023. We have six entries within this class. We have an entry from Eliza Jex, Taryn Blessed, Manzanola FFA, Hannah Hogan, Brandon Kukendall, and Cow Swamp Creek Farms. The first and seconds within this class will also become your champion and reserve champion spring junior bull calves. The 2024 National Western Stock Show is made in part possible by a lot of sponsors. Two sponsors that we want to highlight right now would be Sullivan's Show Supply. Sullivan Supply is a family-owned and operated company founded in 1989. As the innovative leader in livestock show supplies, Sullivan Supply has kept the values of hard work, family ties, and quality products at its core. Sullivan Supply is proud to service the livestock industry and wishes all the exhibitors at the National Western Stock Show the best of luck. And John Deere. John Deere is the official agricultural turf equipment provider of the National Western Stock Show for 2024. You can visit your local John Deere dealer for great deals now and always. Remember, nothing runs like a deer.
Here's a nice lineup, and if you young ladies would pull across the ring in second and third, here's a real nice lineup of these bulls. First place bulls, pretty exceptional. Uh, doesn't matter what color, what breed he is, you'd like to see bulls, uh, bull calves with this kind of shape and this kind of style to him. And I think that's two words that fit him real well. He is a very shapely bull with a lot of muscle and a lot of thickness down his top. He's got a big old bulging, wide, thick kind of a hip. Bull's got real width at both ends of his skeleton. He's an attractive, good-looking, really, really fresh-haired, well-presented bull. But for as much as he has in looks, he's still got some strength and some masculinity up in that front end. He's got some strength up there about his brow. He's got some crest and manliness up there about his, about his neck. But still, he comes back to such a good top line, so sound, good testicle development at this age. There's a nice way to start this class. There's a real big bone clean made bull that comes to us in second. I love the length and stretch and extension of body that he has. Again, a super stout structured kind of a bull with a lot of leg underneath him. He too is a good bull in terms of muscle. I like his thickness when he walks. He cuts a deep crease in his hip there. You can see some expression of muscle, but he just gets out and measured. And overall, there's just not that high degree of quality that we find in that good class winning bull. But a super long individual that's tall, level, has a lot of bone. You want to see a real masculine, strong made bull, let's take a look at our bull in third. He's one of the more rugged, constructed kind of bulls that we have out here that's got a lot of power up in the front third of his body. He too's a real husky, real manly, real masculine kind of a bull that's built with strength up through his neck and shoulder and forearm. He's got good natural body shape to him good natural muscling to him. Bulls maybe not quite as far along in terms of feed and development and nutrition as the bulls in first and second, but there's one I can see maturing into something that's pretty special. Let him rock on into that two-year-old, three-year-old age and grow into some of that masculinity a little bit. He's got the right kind of structure and the right kind of soundness. I think that one's kind of built for the long run. He's going to make a good big bull. Here's the thickest, most shapely bull in the entire class. A big, bulging, cool quarter horse shaped kind of hip on him. Lots of turn. Another one that cuts a real deep crease. Super wide when you get in behind him. Good width in his chest. His muscle almost works against him. There's so much of it, it gets rounder, it gets harder, and it gets tighter, and you really see that affect his structure. He wants to get down in his pins, he gets his legs underneath him more, and he's tight in his hock today. A big framed long-sided bull that's super clean made in his neck and chest comes out next. This is a bull that's just green today. He's a little tight in his body, he's tight in his flank, but I think that comes to him with time. Today, just not quite ready to show himself off from a condition standpoint. The young man's bull that completes the class is deeper bodied than the bull that's going to go out in front of him. He's moderate, he's compact, but boy, does he have depth of rib. And he's a loose made bull that moves around the ring in good shape. I really like the head on this bull. Another one that just gets out measured today in terms of his overall mass, but real good parts and pieces in that bull. Good luck with him in the future. Congratulations. Your results from class 203 of spring junior bull calves. In sixth place, Manzanola FFA. Fifth place, Eliza Jex. Fourth place, Cow Swamp Creek Farms. Third place, Taryn Blessed. Second place, and your reserve spring junior bull calf is entry 4340 from Hannah Hogan. And your class winner and becoming your champion spring junior bull calf, entry 4363 from Brandon Kukendall. In the ring at this time is now going to be class 204 of miniature Hereford early spring junior bull calves. These bulls were calved March 1st through the 31st of 2023. We have six entries in this class. We have an entry from Briggs Miller Ranch, Callie Rummel, Rafter P. Ranch, two entries from Hat City Cattle Company, and a single entry from Blake Buck. The first and seconds within this class will become your division champion for your early spring junior bull calves.
let our exhibitors get pulled into position here and we're going to lead out and show you a first place bull that I think wins this class real logically. He's as sound structured of a bull that we have out here and ends up becoming one of the two more massive that we have to choose from. This bull's super, super powerful. He's got a big top and a big hip with a good rib cage in him. And compared to the other massive bull in class, he handles all that better in terms of his structure and movement. There's a better leg set in terms of his hock and his placement of that back leg. Just the soundness and athleticism that he has as he moves around the ring, I prefer more than the bull in second. From a profile and eye appeal standpoint, he measures up really, really good. I think he's built well enough up through the front end of his body in terms of correctness and smoothness, but there's some masculinity and there's some strength there as well that makes him look the part of a bull. There's no doubt this is one stout rascal here coming to us in second. As thick hip this thick topped is anything that we have with more performance and more body and more WDA I'm guessing than anything else that we would have here but I'd like to just put with that today a different hind leg underneath him he's a little tighter on that pastern he pulls his hind leg underneath him more than I prefer but I tell you what you get him on the stand and it's hard to argue with his power he's so incredibly massive he's so incredibly thick He's one of the really, really good bulls in the class. It's a close placing, but today that's why I'm keeping him in second. Young man, I think you've got a bull to watch in third. This is a young bull. He's not quite as far along as the bulls in first and second. But again, you, you, as a judge, I said this in the Heifer Show, you sometimes can't help but let your imagination run away from you a little bit and think, man, I wonder what this one's going to look like a year from now. And this is one of them that I would really like to watch and keep my eye on. I think that one is built so good in terms of his structure at the ground, his feet and leg, his skeleton, his pattern. He's got good natural muscle, and he's so balanced. He's so proportional. He's maybe not as chiseled out in terms of his fit job today, but you let this bull develop and mature, and if he comes on like I think he will, he's going to make this a really, really tough show this time next year. Good job and good luck with that bull. The young lady's bull that comes out next is one of the more moderate frame bulls, just naturally in his type. He's massive in his body, he's deep, he's not as long and as stretchy as some others, but that's just the kind that he is. He is so good pattern and neat made though. One of the nicest fronted bulls in the entire class that I appreciate just in terms of his lines. He's level, he's square in his hip, there's a lot of bone there today. I think he gets just outmeasured in terms of that overall length, but I'm gonna put him in the same category category as that third place bull and call him one of the bulls that I think is really going to be fun to watch grow and develop you know this is just what my opinion is of them as calves but these they're going to change so much over the next year and he's one of the bulls in this class that I think has got a lot of promise and potential here's a real thick muscular bull coming out next big top big hip lots of bulge and shape and expression in that bull and I like that about him I guess I'd like to change the way that one moves a little bit on his hind legs he wants to knuckle up on those pasterns today and get more up on his toes if we could just free him up he could certainly go higher in the class because he's got a lot of length and a lot of extension the ladies bull that completes the class is thank you is by no means a last place bull he's a pretty sound structured pretty complete type of bull that's nicely balanced but he too is one of those that just gets out measured and out a little bit today but it's going to be fun to watch sounds repetitive to say but I think as we look back a year from now we're going to find a lot of good bulls came out of this very class at the National Western Stock Show good luck to you exhibitors results for class 204 of early spring junior bull calves in sixth place Briggs Miller Ranch Fifth place is Rafter P. Ranch. Fourth place is Callie Rumo. Third place goes to Blake Buck. In second place, and your reserve early spring junior bull calf, entry 4308 from Hat City Cattle Company. And your class winner and your champion early spring junior bull calf, entry 4307 from Hat City Cattle Company. In the ring at this time is now class 205 of winter junior bull calves. These bulls were calved January 1st through February 28th of 2023. We have two entries in this class. We have an entry from Hat City Cattle Company and an entry from Ava Henderson. 
These are the two bulls in this class and the only class within the division. So first and seconds within this class will become your champion and reserve champion winter junior bull calves. This is a real intriguing pair of bulls. This is a closely matched, close placing kind of a class here. I'm going to use the ladies bull to start the class. And what I again will say is an extremely, extremely close placing. But the bull that I'm going to use to win the class is totally massive. He is the bigger bodied bull of the pair. He's extremely thick topped and thick hipped. You don't expect him to be able to move as well he do, as he does with that kind of mass and power and shape to him. He's large testicled, he's masculine, and he's manly and strong up in the front part of his body. There's just a lot to like about him from a pure power and performance standpoint. If we were going to change him, I would neaten him up in his shoulder a little bit, and that's a real advantage that I give to the bull in second. That bull is smoother in his shoulder, and he ties in better at the top of his shoulder in those blades especially than does our bull that wins the class. He's the leaner conditioned bull of the pair and today he doesn't show himself off quite as nicely because of that. He doesn't show you that mass and that drop and that rear flank but I would not under no circumstances place any bets on how this deal is going to shake out a year from now. Those are two real, real good bulls, and there's no doubt in my mind, I think that placing will go back and forth all year long. Once again, good luck to those exhibitors on a great pair. Results from Class 205 of Winter Junior Bull Calves and the Miniature Herefords in second place and your reserve champion winter junior bull calf entry 4338 from Ava Henderson and in first place your champion winter junior bull calf entry 4306 from Hat City Cattle Company coming into the ring at this time is now class 206 class 206 consists of fall intermediate bulls calved October 1st through December 31st of 2022. We have two entries in this class. We have entry 4357 from Deacon James and entry 4324 from Canyon Dops. These are the only two bulls within this class as well as the only class within the division. So first and second within class 206 will become your champion and reserve champion fall intermediate bulls. Just like I said about the last class, uh, not a last place individual. These many Hereford bull exhibitors 
continue to just really impress me with the quality that you guys are leading through here. Uh, in this class, none more so than the bull that I've chosen in first. Another one that's uh, just a total meat wagon. A truck when you get behind him in terms of width and muscle and thickness. Still stylish and eye appealing. A bull that moves with a long step, although he could have a little more cushion at his pastern. A bull that's packing that many pounds, that much performance and that much meat though, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt on maybe not taking a perfect step on that pastern every single time. Because I see nothing in his hock, I see nothing in his shoulder, nothing in his hip that concerns me from a structure standpoint. And I love him so much from a mass and a style and just a quality standpoint. I love the bull in second. He's a more moderate kind of a bull, but relative to his height, that bull's freakish in terms of his length. I, I, and take that into consideration. We've seen taller bulls, but boy, you won't hardly find one that's any longer. And you see that length everywhere. He's wildly long up in his front end, tremendously extended down his spine. He's stretched out and square in his hip. Even in the way that that bull moves, he moves with length of body. Uh, if you want to grant that he's got better flex today in his pastern compared to our class winning bull, I wouldn't argue with you. I like the soundness that he has. But in this class against that real massive high quality individual, again I say he just gets out measured in overall body volume, overall thickness and width from end to end. But as an individual, I'm a big fan of this bull in second. Congrats to you both. Your results for Class 206 of Fall Intermediate Bulls in second place in your reserve Fall Intermediate Bull. Entry 4357 from Deacon James. And your class winner and champion Fall Intermediate Bull is entry 4324 from Canyon Dops. At this time, we will now bring in Class 207. These are Summer Intermediate Bulls calved July 1st through September 30th of 2022. We have three total entries within class 207. We have an entry from Hannah Hogan, Brenna Thorson, and Evie Mitchell. The first and seconds within this class are the winners of the division. So first and second will become your champion and reserve champion, Summer Intermediate Bull Calves. Well, I'm going to say again what I've said before. These bull classes continue to be so impressive to me. 
This is a really different kind of bull that I'm going to use up here to win it. This dark red bull is on the upper limits of frame size, I think, for the breed. But he is so exceptional in terms of the squareness, the circumference of bone, the amount of power that he has, that I think you can't deny letting him win this class. In addition to that, he's a uh, phenomenally clean-made bull when you study him through his neck, his chest, and his sheath, through the lower third of his body. He's still a good testicled bull, along with the extra height and stature and frame that he has. He also has a lot of length of body, length up front, length in the center of his body, and out through that hip. He's just unusual in how wide and square he is from hooks to pins. My criticism of the bull is this. With that extra frame size today, he's just barely adequate in terms of body volume, in my opinion. I especially see that behind his shoulder. I think he's a little pinched in his heart girth. And then back in that rear rib and flank. I think he's a, a nickel pinched there. I'd like to just see him, quite honestly, pulled down and drop down more in the lower third of his body to totally balance out that bull relative to his size. But again, the power is undeniable, and he's going to be your class winner. The more traditional bull in this class comes to us in second. He's a bull that sounds structured, good-bodied, thick-muscled. I love all those things about him, but his muscle comes in a little rounder package, especially in that hip. He's a little keener and more refined about his bone work, and as you watch him walk, he gets those back legs underneath him just a little bit more on the move. But from a body and a muscle standpoint, from just a classic mini Hereford breeding bull look, I admire him a great deal. And then the young ladies bull in third is another one of the more powerfully muscled bulls that we have to choose from. When you look at this bull from any angle, you see shape. You see bulge, you see turn and curve and definition of muscle. As this bull walks, he cuts a big deep crease into the side of his hip and that muscle really ripples out of him. I think it can work against him. That muscle comes in a rounder package. He drops his pins, he gets his back legs underneath him more on the move. So from a structure and skeleton standpoint, we could make him a little better, but I love the muscle. Another real good class. How about we give these bull exhibitors a nice round of applause? They're doing a good job. Your results from Class 207 of Summer Intermediate Bulls. In third place, Evie Mitchell. In second place, in your reserve Summer Intermediate Champion Bull, entry 43-42 from Hannah Hogan. In your class winner and becoming your champion Summer Intermediate Bull, entry 44-36 from Brenna Thorson. At this time, we will now bring into the ring Class 208. These are spring intermediate bulls calved April 1st through June 30th of 2022. We have two entries in this class, entry 4328 from Reagan Embens and an entry 4356 from Deacon James. These are the only two bulls within this class and the only class within the division. So therefore, first and second within class 208 will become your champion and reserve champion spring intermediate bulls. The quality keeps coming in this miniature Hereford Bull Show. We've got another nice pair, and this is a cool, cocky dude that wins the class. Really fresh, really powerful, really loose structured, an extremely, extremely long-bodied bull. Again, everywhere you want to measure him, 
length of front, length of side, length of hip. He impresses you with the extension and the stretch that he has. Of this pair, he's the bigger footed, bigger testicled bull. And I think he's striking from a phenotype standpoint. He's not perfect. Our bull in second transitions better from his shoulder into his forerib, whereas this bull wants to break slightly behind his shoulder. And our bull in second maybe sets in just a little leveler in his tail head, but this bull is so good from a length, looseness, soundness, and muscle standpoint. I think he's a good winner for this class. I do like the bull a great deal in second. And as I mentioned, if you want to grant him something, I think right there at the top of his shoulder, he comes from that shoulder into his top line much more correct, more level, and maintains that levelness across his loin and out that big long rump that he has. I do like his tail head setting a little better, but on the other side of the coin, he's a bull that I just think gets out measured by the overall mass and thickness and substance that we see in our class winning bull, but no doubt, this is an exceptional bull in second as well. Congratulations to both these ladies. Results from Class 208 of Spring Intermediate Bulls in second place in your reserve champion Spring Intermediate Bull. Entry 4356 from Deacon James. Your class winner and your champion Spring Intermediate Bull. Entry 4328 from Reagan Emmons. At this time, we will now bring in Class 209 of Winter Intermediate Bulls. These bulls were calved January 1st through March 31st of 2022. We have an entry from Jeff Vineyard and an entry from Bryce White. These two bulls are the only bulls within this class and the only class within the division. So therefore, first and second within this class is your champion and reserve champion winter intermediate bulls. Really a nice bull that wins this class. Uh, not only is the more massive bull of the pair, but he's the bigger, longer bull of the pair. Bull looks the part in terms of balance and eye appeal. He handles himself well in terms of his structure and his movement. My favorite view of the bull is probably from that rear three-quarter. He's really shapy. He's really wide. Bull's got a lot of width from end to end and power back in that hip. And as I said, for a massive, masculine, thick kind of individual, uh, he handles himself, I think, well enough on the move. Gentleman's bull that comes to us in second, real good individual in his own right. He's got thickness. He's got meatiness back in that hip and high quarter some top shape in that bull and some upper upper rib shape here's a bull though that today gives up some pounds he gives up some size I don't think is as much of a total package bull as the one that wins it but a real useful bull that'll sure do a job for somebody congratulations results from class 209 of winter intermediate bulls in second place and your reserve winter intermediate bull is entry 4442 from Jeff Vineyard. Your class winner and your champion winter intermediate bull, entry 4453 from Bryce White. Coming in the ring at this time is now going to be class 210. These are senior two-year-old bulls.
These bulls were calved January 1st through December 31st of 2021. We have three entries within this class. We have entry from Cow Swamp Creek Farms, an entry from Mendel Cattle, and an entry from Brian Moore. The first and second place within this class will become your champion and reserve champion senior two-year-old Bulls. Weaver Leather and Weaver Livestock is committed to helping you be the very best that you can be. You can stop by their booth between the Junior Barn and the Stadium Arena to check out their full line of show supplies backed by industry experts. Weaver is devoted to fueling your enthusiasm for showing livestock and innovative products here at the National Western Stock Show. Also, Legacy Livestock Imaging, the official 2024 National Western Stock Show photographers. You can get photos at the backdrop as well as find ringside images online with Legacy Livestock as well as NationalWestern.com. We appreciate the livestock team working here for Legacy as they take great pictures of the 2024 National Western Stock Show. This is just an awesome opportunity to judge and to watch and to exhibit high quality cattle here. This senior bull class and division I think is, is totally awesome. I think these are three really, really top notch bulls that we have in here. But you want to talk about a cool one. I'm glad to be here to get an opportunity to use this bull. What a neat skull and head and just front end on this bull. So traditional with that horn tipped down towards his face like that just gives him a real breeding bull look. But from their back, what a good shoulder, good body, and good, good hip that bull has in him. He is loaded up with power as much as anything that we've seen, not only from a muscle and mass standpoint, but look at the bone and the foot that one has underneath him. Look at how well he can still motor around and move. To have that kind of mobility and flexibility with that kind of power is a tough, tough thing to do, and he does it well. Gentleman's bull that comes to us in second, I think compared to that bull in third, is smoother up through that shoulder and square in that hip. I think he steps down on more bone with a little better leg set than that bull in second. Don't hear me say he's light muscled, but he probably has the least of the three in this class. That's noteworthy, but I think he more than makes up for it in terms of his flexibility and his smoothness throughout. Here's the other powerhouse. You want to talk about a big butted one. Get behind him and he has a giant running gear on him. Big, bulging, shapely, quarter horse shaped kind of hip. Tons of turn, tons of crease. But that muscle comes in a little harder, rounder package that begins to affect his movement. Shoulders not as good in him as those first two bulls. But he is a truck and I love the muscle. Congratulations on a great trio. Results from class 210 of senior two-year-old bulls in third place. Entry 4420 from Cow Swamp Creek Farms. In second place in your reserve senior two-year-old bull. Entry 4385 from Brian Moore. Your class winner and your champion senior two-year-old bull. Entry 4374 from Mendel Cattle. At this time, we will now set our ring up to bring in all of our division winners for our judge, Mr. Jake Scott, to select your grand champion and reserve grand champion bulls.
If everyone could turn your attention to the center of the ring, we're going to draw for the 50-50 raffle. So if you have your tickets, get them out. We're going to draw for the 50-50 raffle. The girls will do that right now, and they will select the winner, and they'll bring it up to me, and I'll announce who the winner is. The suspense is killing me. I'm sure it's killing everybody. Tommy Neal. Tommy Neal, if you're in the building, you have won the 50-50 raffle. Please come up to our tables here in the front, and we will let you collect your prize. Again, Tommy Neal, the winner of the 50-50 raffle for this year's 2024 National Western Stock Show at the Miniature Herefords. Coming in the ring at this time is now all of our champion bulls for our judge, Mr. Jake Scott, to evaluate. He will be selecting our grand champion and reserve grand champions. From your fall junior bull calf division, your champion is entry 4437 from Brenna Thorson. From your summer junior bull calf division, your champion, entry 4426 from Caleb Spencer. Your champion spring junior bull calf is none other than entry 4363 from Brandon Kukendall. Your champion early spring junior bull calf is entry 4307 from Hat City Cattle Company. Your champion winter junior bull calf, entry 4306 from Hat City Cattle Company. Your champion fall intermediate bull is entry 4324 from Canyon Dops. Your champion summer intermediate bull, entry 4436 from Brenna Thorson. Your champion spring intermediate bull is entry 4328 from Reagan Emmons. Your champion winter intermediate bull, entry 4453 from Bryce White. And your champion senior two-year-old bull is entry 4374 from Mendel Cattle. Those are the bulls in contention for your grand champion bulls. The reserve will come down to our individuals from the reserve divisions. Your reserve fall junior bull calf is from Seal Livestock. The reserve summer junior bull calf comes from McKenna Camp. Reserve spring junior bull calf comes from Hannah Hogan. Your reserve early spring junior bull calf comes from Hat City Cattle Company. The reserve winter junior bull calf comes from Ava Henderson. The reserve fall intermediate bull comes from Deacon James. The reserve summer intermediate bull comes from Hannah Hogan. The reserve spring intermediate bull comes from Deacon James. The reserve winter intermediate bull comes from Jeff Vineyard. And rounding out our slate of champions, the reserve senior two-year-old bull 
comes from Brian Moore. Those are the individuals in contention for your grand and reserve grand champion bulls here at the 2024 National Western Stock Show's miniature Hereford Show. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, begin by asking you folks at ringside, give these bull exhibitors a tremendous round of applause. What a great, great, great bull show. After the heifer show, I had a chance to visit with some folks that came up to me and we just reminisced a little bit about, I think it was near 15 years ago, the first time I had a chance to judge the mini Herefords. And I said then what I'm going to say to you now, I wish chronologically we could go back and see pictures of the improvements this breed has made from then until now. I think you'd take your breath away. And if you wasn't around in this breed 10, 15 years ago, let me tell you the quality, the structure, the look that's been bred into these cattle, these breeders deserve a tremendous amount of applause. And so much of that credit goes to the herd bulls that you have in your breed. And this lineup of bulls right here, I think, has just got to get your heart pumping. I think there's some divisions up here in these young calves that as we come back a year from now or more, we're going to see some tremendous individuals emerge from these young breeds. Yet there are some bulls here that are ready to collect semen, get in cows, and go do a job right now that I think you ought to be totally, totally fired up about. I've done my very level best to explain each of these bulls in their classes and division. We're not going to go through them again, but I will say this. The, the, the bull that I'm going to use today is the kind that we would raise. I think he's totally intriguing from a power standpoint, from a breeding bull standpoint, and I think he's pretty dominant in this lineup. My last comment is thank you so much to the staff and the administration of the National Western Stock Show. This is one of the real American classics. I love this building, I love the history, and I love everything about being here in Denver for the next week. And I'm very honored to be a part of being asked to judge some of the events here. So thank you for that opportunity. We'll go find you a champion now. Your grand champion bull is also your champion senior two-year-old bull. That is entry 4374 from Mendel Cattle. Rolling into consideration for the reserve will be the reserve senior two-year-old bull. That'll be entry 4385 from Brian Moore. Your reserve grand champion bull comes from the fall intermediate division. That is entry 4324 from Canyon Dops. We will be rolling right into class 402, which is the pair of bulls. We have a single entry in this class, so we'll evaluate this class before pictures. So class 402 pair of bulls. We will need the two entries from Hat City Cattle Company. Please make your way into the show ring, and then we'll get your 
a words done, and then we will get over to pictures, and we will then pause for our pictures and then roll right into the markets. So again, class 402, get ready. The group shows are fun to see uh, these breeders display their whole program and the uniformity and the evenness of this kind of uh, this pair of bulls here I think shows you the importance that these folks place on body volume and thickness and mass. These are real beef cattle and I think they're real deserving winners. Congratulations. Congratulations to our first place winner of Class 402, Hat City Cattle Company. At this time, we will now take a break, and we'll have our judge, Mr. Jake Scott, make his way to the backdrop for pictures with all of our bowl champions. So, again, bear with us here. We'll take a 15, 20-minute break, and then we'll get started with our next class, which will be Class 501A of Prospect Steers. But, again, we're pausing for pictures at the backdrop. If you need them, go get them. Legacy Livestock Imaging, official photographer and sponsor the National Western Stock Show here for 2024. A reminder that the cattle releases are needed in order for you to leave the grounds. All cattle releases come from the barn steward shed located between doors 21 and 22 outside. Releases are required to leave the grounds, so please, if you are looking to leave, be sure to seek out a release from the steward shed located between barn doors 21 and 22 outside the barn.
Looks like our pictures are wrapped up on the other end, and we'll get set here to have our judge, Mr. Jake Scott, get his way back up here, and we'll get started. We're going to get started with our prospect steer show, and we're going to have class 501A of prospect steers here shortly once we get all of our exhibitors up here to the ring. So give us about five minutes, and we'll get set, and we'll get continuing here with class 501A of prospect steers.
All right, well, we welcome everybody back here to the Miniature Hereford Show. We're going to get started with Class 501A of Prospect Steers. These steers were calved January 1st through December 31st. We have a total of three entries within Class 501A. We have an entry from Lillian Stavig, Callie Rumo, and Juno Hunter. These three entries complete Class 501A of Prospect Steers. Well, we kick off our steer show with a real dominant individual to win this particular class. It's easily the highest quality, best looking, best made one that's super attractive from a profile standpoint. He's really, really neat necked. He's excellent in terms of levelness and squareness of his lines. He's the heaviest boned, heaviest structured steer of the class, and he's also very, very clean in his design when you look at his chest and his sheath. Just a top quality individual to start off with. I think it's a closer race between second and third, and I prefer the structural soundness and the squareness of the second place heifer more than that deeper bodied steer in third. He's more like our class winner in terms of his cleanliness, his length of neck, his smoothness of front, his soundness of structure is more appealing to me. Now I realize that the steer that places third today is the massive one in class in terms of his body volume, but he's a little hard to see. He's not being very cooperative. He's a heavier sheath steer. He's a little coarser and plainer about that head today, but I wish him the best of luck going forward. Congratulations, steer exhibitors. Your results from Class 501A of Prospect Steers in third place, Juno Hunter. Second place goes to Lillian Stavig. And your class winner goes to Callie Rumo. At this time, we will now bring into the ring Class 501B Prospect Steers. These steers were calved January 1st through December 31st of 2023. We have a few entries in this class. We have Gary Larson, Evie Mitchell, Harper Lashmet, and two entries from Jordan Chavara. This completes class 501B of Prospect Steers.
I think this is kind of a two-pair class, in my opinion, with a close placing between first and second and another close placing between third and fourth. Here's the differences that I find today. I don't think there's any question that the steer in first here is the thickest, most powerful, most muscular steer that we have to choose from. He's got a gigantic top, a really wide square hip and pin placing, carries that thickness right down into a good hock and a good, good leg with a lot of bone. I like this steer best from the stand because when you put him in motion, he's a little tighter in the way that he moves. And I certainly would like to loosen him up today, but I think he has enough power and enough muscle that I'm going to go ahead and use him. What makes it a close race is this steer in second is so good in terms of his structure. And young lady, you can go ahead and head out. Pull your steer in second around here and let folks see how this steer moves. At the ground, he's the better steer of the pair. Uh, don't hear me say that he's light muscled. I think he's got plenty, but I think there's just enough difference in terms of muscle between our class winner and him that I'm going to leave him in second today because he is a notch flatter. As these steers grow and develop and mature and have more time on feet, that may change. I really like his pattern. I like his soundness. He's one of the good ones in the class. We almost have the same decision to make in third and fourth. Uh, there certainly is a difference in power and muscle here. Uh, this is a tremendously big top, big butted steer that's got a lot of length of body. When she sets him up, puts him on the, uh, parks him there, lets you get a side view, he gives you a really clean look. He's really wild fronted, tons of power, but there's no doubt he needs to move better and he's a little tighter bodied. That's where the fourth place steer dominates him. He's deep ribbed and he's sounder structured, but of all four steers in the class, he's the one that's the flattest. I just like to see him a little thicker. Close placings between both pairs on each end. I wish these kids the best of luck going forward. Your results from class 501B of prospect steers, miniature Herefords in fourth place, Gary Larson. Third place, Evie Mitchell. Second place, entry 4301, Jordan Chavara. And your class winner, entry 4367 from Harper Lashmet. At this time, we will now bring into the ring class 501C of prospect steers. These steers were calved January 1st through December 31st of 2023. We have entries from Hat City Cattle Company, Braun Lashmet, Jordan Shavara, and Hannah Hogan. These entries complete Class 501C of Prospect Steers.
Steer classes are really, really nice here at the National Western. This is a competitive class from top to bottom. I'm going to use this real thick made steer to win the class. I think he's the combination steer that not only has a tremendous amount of top and hip, but I think he balances that with as much look and as much soundness, one of the two sounder steers, I should say, that we have in the lineup. Steer's a little bit bolder up in his front end. I'd like to level that tail head just a little bit, but I still think for the amount of power and the amount of shape that he has, he still has a lot of look and soundness of structure. I'm going to use the lady steer in second because I think he's the one that's most like him. And compared to the steer at third, there's no doubt he's thicker and more shapely. Up high, you find a great big top, and he really is explosive from hooks to pins. Top part of his hip is just tremendous. A lot of width there from stifle to stifle, and he's got more width in his chest and at his hock than does this steer in third. But the steer in third is a sounder moving steer, and that's what we need to fix about that second place steer. I want to bring his tail head down, but we certainly need to loosen him up, and that makes it a close placing for me between him and our third place steer. I like the size, I like the length, I like the performance <coughs> found in our third place steer. Just from a type and kind standpoint, I'm really drawn to him. I just want a little more muscle today to run with those in first and second. Muscle's not a problem for our fourth place steer, but his muscle works against him a little bit as he becomes a rounder steer. He's got more chest, a little more shoulder to him, just not the balance or the pizzazz that we see in first through third. Congratulations, exhibitors. Results from class 501C of prospect steers. Fourth place, entry 4315 from Hat City Cattle Company. Third place goes to Hannah Hogan. Second place goes to entry 4314 from Hat City Cattle Company. And your class winner is entry 4365 from Braun Lashmet. At this time, we will now bring into the ring class 501D of prospect steers. This is a class of steers calved January 1st through December 31st of 2023. This is the only entry in this class. The entry comes from Deacon James Just a single entry class, but boy, this young man walks in here with a steer that grabs your attention real, real quick. Not only is he a beautifully presented steer, but he's also a really good steer. Uh, he's my kind in terms of his size, his height, his length, his pattern. Just the type and kind is one that I'm drawn to. I love his soundness of structure. I love him on both ends, front and rear, in terms of the way that he moves and travels around the ring. And when you get behind him, for as pretty of a steer as he is, I'm pleasantly surprised with how muscular of a steer he is. Good top and good hip shape in him. Look forward to seeing him with some more competition later today. Your results for Class 501D of Prospect Steers. First place, entry 4355 from Deacon James. At this time, we will now set up our ring. We will bring back our first and seconds for our judge to select your grand champion and reserve grand champion Prospect Steers. Exhibitors returning from class 501A would be first place, Callie Rummel. Second place will be Lillian Stavig. Returning from class 501B, first place is Harper Lashmet. And your second place from class 501B is Jordan Chavara. Returning from class 501C will be the first place of Braun Lashmet. Returning for class 501C in second place will be Entry 4314 from Hat City Cattle Company. And the last class that was just in here, Class 501D, will bring back first place Deacon James. These are the animals in contention for your grand champion and reserve grand champion prospect steers in your miniature Hereford breed.
Congrats to our steer exhibitors. Not a very big show, but man alive, you wouldn't know it by the champion lineup that we have here in front of us. Really, really high quality steers from end to end. And uh, some tough choices for me to make, quite honestly, uh, between, um, between these four or actually seven that I've got to choose from. Just real quickly, it's, it's been a brief show. The young lady up here in the jacket has got as stylish and as good patterned of a calf as I think there is in the entire lineup. The quality of his head, the neatness of his neck, the levelness of his lines, the squareness of his hip, I'm in love with. I love the structure of that steer. He looks really, really young and early, but I still think you see some muscle definition and shape in him. I think he's got a world of future. The two steers in the middle kind of logically go together, so to speak. I'm going to talk about them a, a little bit together. <clears throat> Both of those steers, I think, are the same kind in terms of being a little more moderate, but real explosive in terms of their muscle. Big tops, big hips, good rib cages, lots of shape, lots of products. Maybe a little clubbier in their look, and what I mean by that, a little more compact in terms of their body length compared to the steers at, the, at either end of this lineup, but really, really massive steers. You might see some of those steers move just a little bit looser in terms of their structure, but some of that goes with just how thick and meaty those calves are. And then the young man in the cowboy hat at the end of the lineup, he's got a steer that I like just from a growth standpoint. He's got height, he's got length, he's really, really well balanced, and he's super sound structured. He's maybe not just the truck that we see in, in a couple of those in front of him, but don't hear me say that he doesn't have enough muscle. I think he's very, very adequate. So I think there's options here as far as uh, what a person wants to do. I'm going to take a little deeper look and uh, select your champion. As I do that, let's give them all a nice round of applause. Your grand champion prospect steer comes from class 501C of prospect steers. That is entry 4365 from Braun Lashmet. At this time, we will now roll in the second place from that class. Entry 4314 Hat City Cattle Company. These are the top four individuals in contention for your reserve grand champion prospect steer. Your reserve grand champion prospect steer comes from class 501D of prospect steers. That is entry 4355 from Deacon James. We'll get ourselves reset here, and we'll get started with Class 502A of Market Steers. Within Class 502A, we will have two entries. In this class, we will have steers that have calved January 1st through December 31st of 2022.
As previously mentioned, this is class 502A of market steers. In the ring, we have ourselves two entries in this class. We'll have an entry from Deacon James and Chase Hunter. These two entries make up class 502A. As we walk these kids around the ring, we're going to place them exactly the way that they came in. The young man will be the class winner here, and he's got a steer that's the better balanced, more muscular steer. He's wider and thicker and stouter. I think he's a rib longer, but he's certainly square and leveler in their lines. We could say a lot of things about him, but it would all be pretty positive. I think the biggest difference is that he's just got more quality, more look. That's just a really, really nice steer. This is a good steer in second. He's got meat muscle. He's got bone in him, but a steer that's a little plainer in his balance, a little heavier up in that front end, a little more tucked in his flank, not as nice in that hip, but a growthy, performance, stout, structured steer in second. Good job to both these young exhibitors. Your results from Class 502A of Market Steers in second place, entry 4347 from Chase Hunter. And your class winner, entry 4360 from Deacon James. In the ring at this time is now Class 502B of Market Steers. These steers were calved January 1st through December 31st. We have entries from Paisley Osment, Journey Harris, Bryce White, Natalie Cartwright, Evie Mitchell, Lillian Stavig, Megan Shea, and Fallon Savage. These are the animals making up class 502B.
Go ahead and pull them around and set them up for us. Uh, the pair is showing this first place steer are leading a really, really nice one. I love the steer in terms of his pattern and his build in that he's a tall fronted steer. He's extremely strong and level and straight from the top of his shoulder back through his loin and out through that nice square rump. He's a good bodied steer that when you look in, watch that steer walk in the lower third of his body. You can see he's laying on a good degree of cover. He's got a big old whopping good hip in him. Width at both ends of his skeleton. There's bone, there's soundness of structure, plus really good pattern and look. I think he's a rib longer too than the steer that comes to us in second. Second place steer shares his kind of muscularity and just beefiness with some width at both ends of his skeleton. But this is a steer that's a little more compact in his kind. For me, he's a rib shorter and just doesn't have that pizzazz and wow factor that we see in that real elite steer in first, but a super, super nice one. The steer that comes to us in thirds a shapely steer. Got a good hip in him. I like the, the just the thickness that you can see from end to end of that steer. But the longer you study him, the more that thickness comes with some roundness. He's not as square and level in that rump. His pins want to dip down under him more on the move. And you can see that even at the ground as those back legs get a little extra set to him. But from a practical, functional, real world standpoint, looks like a good feeding, good doing kind of a steer that's got body and a lot of meat and muscle. I kind of like the pattern better on this uh, steer coming out next. The steer's a tall fronted steer like our class winner. He's really strong and level across that top. I like the extra length of body that we see. I think he has an advantage there even over the steers in second and in third today. He needs a good, good bone steer. This is a steer that's straighter and steeper though up in that front end. And just from a, from a hair coat and a presenta presentation standpoint, he hits you as stale. He's a little dull out here, he's a little dirtier out here, just doesn't have that freshness and pop to him, but I like the frame and I like the length of body. The steer that's going to come out next, another one of those real practical, beefy, meaty kind of a steers. He's got width and shape. He's really, really shapey up high in his rib cage. Out of the middle of his spine, he really spreads out wide in that rib cage, and he lays a tremendous amount of rib and muscle over it. Excuse me, big, thick, butted steer. The problem with him is it seems that there's a lot of product kind of from that last rib forward in him or a lot of weight from that last rib forward. He's a bulkier, heavier fronted kind of a steer that I just like to change a little bit from a balance standpoint, but I do love the thickness. Here's a real high performing kind of a steer. It looks like a good feeding kind of a rascal. He's a loose made steer from end to end, just loose in his spine, loose in his structure, and I, and I like that about him. He's also a deeper neck, deeper chested kind of a steer that has the most sheath underneath him, which really takes away from his balance. I just like to see him neater and have a little more attractiveness to him. Certainly is a cleaner steer that comes out next. He's a green steer. He's got room to run yet, needs more days on feed, but there's some muscle there. There's some thickness there, and I think a steer that'll, that'll kind of do a little better as he goes, but gets up in that top and off in that hip too much to get any higher today. The other pair showing the calf here, got a real nice one here that we're going to wrap up with, a steer that really travels out nice on his front end. He's a good-headed kind of a steer. He's got a nice top, but again, one just gives up a little bit in terms of that structure and body mass today. Thank you. The results for class 502B of market steers in 8th place, Paisley Osment. 7th place, Natalie Cartwright. 6th place, Lillian Stavig. 5th place, Megan Shea. 4th place, Evie Mitchell. 3rd place, Journey Harris. 2nd place, Bryce White. And your class winner is Fallon Savage. Set to enter the ring at this time is now class 502C of market steers. These are still steers calved January 1st through December 31st of 2022. We have three entries in class 502. C, this is Lillian Stavig, Fallon Savage, and Harper Lashmet. These three entries, again, make up class 502C.
Well, we got three meaty, beefy kind of steers in this class, and all three are getting a, a market-ready look to them in terms of the cover and the finish that they've got. But the steer that's really dominant in terms of power is this uh, young lady steer here, the team that's leading this first-place steer. He's the thick, stout one. And compared to that steer in second, he's so impressive in the center of his hip and in the lower part of that hip. Boy, he just maintains that thickness and fullness and squareness from the top right down. He's really wide at both ends of his skeleton, tracks off with a lot of width, gives you a good look from the side in terms of his balance and his eye appeal. Both he and the second place steer could move a little, uh, a, a little looser, but I think he's really, really acceptable and still brings a ton of power and balance uh, out here to the class today. Young lady, second place steer's a real good top steer, and he's got more bone than our class winner. I like that about him. I like the stoutness of structure and that big old leg that he's walking around on. I think that gives him a real powerful look. He's a good bodied steer, looks like he's been a good feeding steer. But I think the big difference between he and the class winner is he's not designed as nicely through his head, his neck, and his shoulder. He comes up out of his spine a little more with his tail head and is a little rougher out of his rump there. And maybe most importantly, this steer fades a little bit more in his lower quarter as compared to that real big butted steer that wins the class. Here's another good doing steer in third that just looks like he's been a fun one to feed. He's got a lot of feeding capacity and rib and volume to him. He's a steer that when you look at him in his brisket and around his tail head, looks like he's beginning to lay on some cover and some finish. But I don't know it's laying on him maybe as attractively. He's a little rougher and higher in his top. Here's a steer that doesn't balance up as well, and he's got a little extra set to that back leg. We just improve him in that regard. But no doubt a good feeding good butted kind of a steer that looks like he'd really hang a quality product. Nice job. Your results for class 502 C of market steers in third place Lillian Stavig. Second place Harper Lashmet. And your class winner is Fallon Savage. At this time we will now bring back our first and second place winners from classes 502 A, B, and C for our judge to select your grand champion and reserve grand champion market steers. Returning from class 502A in first place, we have entry 4360 from Deacon James. Second place would be entry 4347, Chase Hunter. Returning from class 502B in first place, entry 4413 from Fallon Savage. Second place from that class, entry 4449, Bryce White. Returning from class 502C, first place, entry 4415, Fallon Savage. And the second place from class 502C, entry 4366 from Harper Lashmet. These are the six individuals in contention for your grand champion and reserve grand champion market steers. Well, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to each and every one of our market steer exhibitors, but especially those fortunate enough to make it back out here. How about we show them some love with a nice round of applause for these good kids. If you saw the Prospect Steer Show, I think you'd have to agree we've got more uniformity of type and kind between our class and division winners out here than we did in that steer show and that's really gratifying to me. I like the evenness and the similarities between these three steers. In fact, if you were to tell me that they share some kind of common bloodline, I could believe it. I think all three of these steers are really, really similar in terms of their pattern and their type and kind. I think they're real similar in terms of their skeleton and their makeup. They're tall fronted, long bodied steers that have some frame to them. And that's important in market cattle. You need something to, to, to give them some gainability and to hang some product on. And the product is something else that I like about them. They're thick, they're meaty, they're muscular, they've got good feet, they've got good bone underneath them. And certainly, especially with the two older steers, they look like they're getting in a market ready condition. 
as they've done so, they've maintained some level or some soundness of structure. And the steer that I'm going to use to win this today probably impresses me most from that, that standpoint. He looks like a steer that's market ready and would hang a quality product. But out here in the show ring, he really holds it together in terms of his structure and his soundness. Great set of steers, three good options, but my favorite is the one in the middle. Congratulations. Your grand champion market steer comes from class 502B, that is entry 4413 from Fallon Savage. Rolling into consideration for the reserve will be the second place from class 502B, that is entry 4449 from Bryce White. To tell you how good our steer show is, we take out a champion and we put another one in here and it doesn't weaken our lineup at all. That's a real powerful steer. I love him in terms of his shape, his body, his mass. But the young lady here at the end of the lineup's got my next favorite one. Congratulations, you'll be reserve. Your reserve grand champion market steer comes from class 502C. That is entry 4415 from Fallon Savage. We appreciate everybody coming out to the show for today. Special thanks to our judge, Mr. Jake Scott, our superintendents of the Miniature Hereford Breeders Association. Our superintendents include Luke and Tammy Arnold. A special thanks to all of our royalty and ambassadors this year helping us out. Feel free to get pictures at the backdrop. 